Now this will be our blog application. What you are seeing right now is a front end made with React Native. The first thing that you can see inside this application is here we have this very beautiful slider. And this slider is not just a fake slider, it's an infinite carousel which you can also slide or it will automatically slides for you. And below this slider, you will see these latest posts and we'll fetch more and more posts if we scroll towards the bottom. Also, we can search the post. We can navigate to these single posts. And if you come down here, you will find this. We are rendering these similar posts. And these posts are not fake posts. We will use these tags to find out these similar posts from inside our MongoDB database. And the one very cool thing about this application is, if you notice here we have these two links, right? And links can be of your own website or links can link to different websites as well, right? So we will handle that thing as well. If that link is linking to the outside, then we will open that inside browser. But if that link belongs to our own application, then we will open that inside our own application. So cool, right? Another main cool feature of this application is now this application is internet based, right? If there is no internet, then we don't want to display anything. So here we will handle that thing as well. If there is no internet, we will display something like this. Now, this is our front end application. Now here we are talking about the full stack app. So we need to have a back end API and the admin panel as well, right? So this will be our admin panel from where we can create our post. And inside that application, you saw those featured posts inside that slider and we can create them with the help of this featured option. Here also, you can view the progress or the view this post, like how it will look inside the mobile device before we save this post. Inside our form, we will add this feature like if we select the thumbnail, we will see the progress right in front of us without uploading these images inside our cloud or database. Also, we will handle these meta description and tags and things like that to search similar posts and this meta description will help if you want to publish this application as your web application as well. So this application will be scalable. Now to create these posts, we are going to use Markdown. Now if you guys don't know what Markdown is, then Markdown is a very popular among programmers. It's a language for markup. Markdowns are everywhere. Now if you go to the documentations, most of the documentations are written in Markdown. The readme file which you upload inside the GitHub, that is Markdown. Now if you go to the npm.js and see those documentations all of those things are markdown and this markdown thing is very simple to write now if you guys don't know how to write markdown then i will give you a link from where you can learn about these things it's a 20 minute task you can learn all of the markdowns in 10 to 20 minutes like i already told you markdowns are everywhere if you go to the very popular website called tape.2 there you need to write your post using markdown now while creating this post if you accidentally refresh or close this tab then we'll store those posts or those changes inside local stories so no data loss inside this admin panel we will render these nine posts and if there is more posts then we will give these paginations to render more posts here we can edit our post We can delete the post. We can search these posts. And one more cool thing about this admin panel is here we will see how we can create this awesome slide level nav using React and Tailwind CSS. So all of this admin panel is made with React and Tailwind CSS. And here we have lots of things to learn about. Now, the main feature about this Markdown editor is here, we can place our images as well. 
So for that here we have the separate button from where we can upload a single image and use the URL link to render that image inside our blog post. Now last but not the least here we will use this beautiful component to render these error and other notifications. So far we write down our backend API and writing backend API is not that much satisfying to us because when we write backend API we cannot see the progress, we cannot see those UI elements right. Now in this video we are going to do exactly the same thing, we are going to write down our admin panel and here you can see in the previous video we write down this backend API. Now here I have another folder called admin and this is just a boilerplate code which comes with create a react app. To create this you need to just type this npx create a react app and you need to provide this app name which you want to use and if you press enter it will create this project for you okay to do this you need to have node.js installed and if you guys don't know about anything react then you can watch the series I made about react okay now Oh, we will simply open this inside our VS code and this is how it looks now before we start writing any code Let me show you the project itself so that you guys can understand what we are going to build This will be our admin panel here You can see this looks simple, but it has lots of things which we can learn here We have this pagination will fetch these posts. Okay, and here we have this form this is the markdown editor where we can write our markdown and if you view this post you can see them here as well we can reset this form and also we can select this thumbnail and if you select this thumbnail you can see the progress right here and also here we have this search bar we can search them now I press escape key we can escape from this search we have lots of things okay now to create this uh, admin panel we will use Tailwind CSS and react and this is the Tailwind CSS.com you need to go to this get started and here if you click on this framework guides it will guide you how you can use with these frameworks so we will use this create react app so we need to create here and this is how you can create your react app you guys don't know as I already told you now here first of all we need to install this tailwind css and we need to initialize this tailwind config file with this command first of all let's uh, install this tailwind css inside our project and i'll copy another command which will initialize this tailwind config file and it is taking some time let's clear out this terminal and i'll paste it here now again we need to go to this documentation and if you come down here we need to add these code inside our configuration file so let's copy this and as soon as you run this command this will create this tailwind config.js file inside our project we need to go to this config file and here inside this content i'll add these code and here we are not using typescript so i'll remove this ts and tsx so let's save this config file and again we need to go inside here and we need to use these import statements and we need to add them inside our index.css let's remove all of them and paste those code let's save this file that's it this is how we can configure the Stelvin CSS and if I clear out this terminal and let's start the server with this npm start command it will start this application now it will take some time so I will see you guys in a bit now you can see this is the boilerplate application which we get with that create react app okay first of all I want to change this little icon which is the react icon now for that I have already placed this logo inside this public folder this is just simple text and I exported it from this figma in this png format okay you can use any graphic design tool to do this kind of thing okay and uh, let's uh, go to this index.html and here let me hide all of them first and here you can see we have this logo and this logo or this fab icon so i will change this fab icon to logo.png and i'll change this logo to logo.png as well let's save this file and if i go to this app here you can see the 
fab icon is now changed now i will remove all of the code from inside this app.js as well and let's discuss what we will do after removing all of the code from inside this app.js okay first of all we will create this nav bar we will create this structure for this nav and the main content and we will add content later but first uh, we will create these structures and let's see how we can create this slidable or foldable nav bar okay so for that what we can do i'll remove all of them or i'll close all of them and let's uh, go to this src app.js and here i'll remove all of them so let's create this new functional component and here i will use this div and tailwind css is all about classes okay here we can use a bunch of class names and here also we can use this intelligence if you are installing if you have this tailwind css intelligence you can use this suggestions as well now first of all here i will add this nav section and i will another i'll add another and that will be our content section and first of all let's work on this nav section here i'll create this nav with this width 56 and uh, let's add this height screen which will be 100 viewport height okay full 100 percent of the screen and here you can see i cannot use this emit and uh, to use this we can change this language you need to click on this javascript here and we can type out this react and it will allow us to use this react with typescript or react with javascript i'll go with react with javascript and here we can use this emit as well now just to show these progress what i will do i'll use this background color a red of 100 and let's copy and paste it below and this time for the content section i want to use the entire width i just want to leave this uh, width 56 for this div and i'll use rest of the width for this content and for that what we can do because here we are using this flex because we want them side by side right so here we can use this flex of one flex of one and let's change this color to blue and let's save this file and as you can see this is how it looks okay now what i will do here we uh, will use this uh, mean height of uh, the screen okay minimum height will be 100 vh now here i will add this button which will toggle this nav bar so for this button what we need to do we need to go to this react icons let's search for this react icons and uh, if you come to this website okay this is the very first result when you search for this react icons now we can use this command and install this react icons inside our react project and we can use these icons inside our project so let's install it with this command we need to kill the server first we can use this control c and we can install this react icons now i'll clear out this and start the server now let's search for the icon that we want to use so i'll search for this menu menu icon and i'll use both of these icons one is to open the icon and one is to close the icon okay so first let's uh, use this one to close the icon because first uh, what we will do we'll open the icon and if user wants to they can close the icon as well so inside here what is happening let me paste that code and now we need to import it and uh, we need to import it from this react icons like this we will use this named import statement and we need to go to this react icons and we need to also provide the icon provider name and that will be ai because here you can see we are using this ai you can use the first two initial or if you are confused then you can go to the documentation and search for the icon provider okay and here uh, we can use the size as well let's use this 25 let's save this file and if i come to my app man we have nothing okay we have something and this is how it looks inside this big screen and this is how it looks in this smaller screen now what we will do we will let's add that navigation or toggle navigation thing for that inside this button what we can do we can add this on click listener 
and let's say create this method called toggle nav and I'll create this method right here toggle nav and inside this toggle nav what we will do we will toggle the state of this react state obviously so the state will be closed nav and set close nav and we will use this use state hook okay default value will be false obviously and we will use this method to toggle this state and to toggle this we just need to use this not operator what it will do it will does like if the closed nav is false it will make it true if it is true then it will make it false because here we are using this not operator right now ladies and gentlemen what we can do we can use this closed nav and uh, change the width of this nav section so what i will do i will remove this from here and i'll wrap them inside this curly brace and here we can use this new method called get nav width and i will invoke this function let's use this plus icon and also don't forget to use this one space in front of this edge screen okay now we'll create this uh, get nav width here and here what we can do we can simply return this and uh, to return this we will use this close nav and let's use this ternary operator and if this nav is closed then we will use this width of 16 otherwise we'll use this width of 56 now if i save this file and go to my app you can see the change right but we want to see that little animation as well you can see it is jumping around here and there now we want to add that animation or that transition effect for that if you search here for this transition okay transition property and if you go on this documentation you will find out that you cannot use a transition for width but if you come down you can add these custom properties so let's copy this transition property and to extend this we need to go inside our tailwind config file okay and here we can extend this let's remove this spacing and i will extend this width transition and i'll use this name width so now because we are using this width name here we can go to this and we can add this transition width like this okay now let's save this file and let's see the change and you can see this smooth transition right now if i make it 100 percent this is how it looks but if i zoom in a bit then this is how it looks so cool right now that's it for this animation part but uh, as i already told you when we toggle this nav we'll use different icons so what we can do we can copy this icon so if this nav bar is closed like closed nav we will use this icon otherwise we will use this icon and we need to also import it from this react icons let's use this same size here as well so now we have different icons so what i will do i'll quickly flip them over like i want to add this one here and this one here now it looks perfectly fine for me okay now if you come to this one you can't come to this one because you don't have this application right now but let me show you something here if we go to this create post or if we come to this home you can see we are rendering all of these content in the middle right so for that what i will do i will assign some class name to the container that we are going to add inside this content section now below this nav toggler button what i will do i'll add this d with a class name max with screen lg and also let's use this max uh, margin x auto 
now if I save this file or before I do this let's add something here and you can see now the content is in the middle okay so now whatever we add inside this div will come in the middle because if you hover over on this if you have that extension which I showed you earlier you can see what result you will get if you use this class name okay now this margin x auto will what it will do it will move them move the content in the center of our screen okay now inside this div we can add rest of the content and here we will add our routers now we have everything we can add navigations but before that let's come to this web browser and search for this thing called react router and if you come to this search result let's click here we need to install this react router and to create this application we will use react router dom version 6 and sorry for that and if you guys don't know about this how to use this react router version 6 then i already have a detailed video in this topic you can check that out i'll provide its link in the description box below and it is taking so much time to open i guess my net is slow right now okay finally it opens let's click on this read the docs and here we can go to this installation and we can go to this npm and now we want to install this react router dom version 6 and react router works with a different uh, environment like right? react router also it works with the react navigation but here we want to work with this dom or this web browser so we can install this react router dom inside our project so let's open the terminal kill the terminal clear out the terminal and let's install this react router dom now if you come to this documentation again and if you come down here you will see the example how we can use this uh, react router inside our application now first of all we need to wrap this app component or this application inside this browser router and then we can use these things and if you are already familiar with context api then you will understand everything what is going on here okay and if you guys also don't know the context api then i already have a video about that you can check that out okay let's uh, clear out the terminal i'll start this and let's hide both of them and now let's go to this index.js now here i will remove this react strict i don't want to use this we will instead use this browser router like this and our app opened here so let's minimize this now i'll save this file come to this app component and here inside this we can add our routers okay so first of all we need to add this routes component which we need to import it from this react router tom also you need to import this browser router from inside this react router dom now inside these routes we can add our router or route and also we need to import it from inside this react router dom and inside here inside this route we need to first pass this path name which is just like the we use inside our backend api inside that node this will be our home route so we can use this forward slash and here we need to pass this element and here let's uh, pass this home component currently we don't have this home so we need to create this i'll create this new folder called components and i'll create this home.js and i'll create some more components like this one create post.jsx i'll also change this home.js to jsx and here let's add this functional component and i'll type out this home let's save this file copy this one and i'll go to this create post and i'll change this to create post and what i will do guys i'll quickly create some more component and i will come back okay now i have all of these components create post home not found and update post okay now i'll render them inside our routers so we can copy and paste them below first of all i'll import this home component and inside these components i have just those function component and the text okay 
Now the second path I want to render is this create post. Okay, and instead of this home, let's render this create post and I'll go to this one and change it to update post and the component will be update post and uh, at the end if these route matches to this one it will render uh, this attached component to this element otherwise what we need to do we need to use this component for everything and here i will render this not found okay so this will be our not found component let's save this file and let's come to this application and here it says app.js not found cannot not found so we need to import this not found i guess let's save this and we again have this error basically it happens because of the name conflict let me fix this i guess this is the reason okay now inside this home you can see we have this home component and if i go to this create post then it will be our create post route and also we have this update post and if i go to any gibberish route then that will be our not found page or this not found component okay that's it now we need to set up these routes with our navigation with our nav bar which we will render at the left side of this screen or this web app okay now for that here i will create this nav bar component okay now inside here let's create this functional component and this time i will use this nav element here and inside this nav we will render this ul and this li and inside these li's we can render our components first of all let's see uh, with this home and uh, we will have this create post that's it we will have only these two components or these two list elements now inside this nav section in between these two divs we can add those nav okay so let's use this nav bar component here let's save this file and this is how it looks right now okay now if we click on these nav items nothing will happen so for that here we will use these link tags but instead of this link here i will use this nav link because it will allow us to change those color or the style according to the route and if you guys want to know more about these things then i'll highly recommend you to go and watch the video about this react route in version 6 which i made few days back okay now here inside this nav link we need to first path pass this two and this two attribute is just like href inside that anchor tag okay this will be home route and we will render this home in between this nav link like this let's save this file and i'll copy this one paste it here and i change this to create post with this home let's save this file and this time we will use that create post let's save this file and if i come to this and if i click on this create post it will go to this create post route and this will be our home route now this application or this nav bar is working completely fine let's uh, come here and style these nav bars first of all what i will do i will use or render those icons as well at the front of these link tags because whenever we close this we don't want to render this name or this text we will only render those icons okay so for that here inside our react icons if i go to this one let's search for this home and i'll use this one so we can use this home like this and i'll cut this out from here and i'll render them inside this one and i'll wrap this home tag inside this span otherwise this style will not work because here we want to make it flex and do all other chats okay so let's use this class name here and first of all i'll make it flex and we will use this item center which will be which means 
align items center okay now also here we can use this space x2 which will add space at the x side okay if you are using multiple items that will be added in the between of this x axis like this okay let's save this file and if i come to this app then this is how it looks but if we do it like this so we need to repeat the same procedure for this one as well so i'll cut this out and i'll create this new component called nav item and here we'll accept this to and text or this children or let's call it value okay and i will also accept this icon and we will return this component like this let's format this one instead of this here we will render the icon itself and inside this span we will render this value and inside this two we will render this two that's it now we can come down and we can use this nav item here not like this nav item and here we need to pass this two and this will be home route and value will be home and the icon and this icon will be that outline home okay now i will use the size as well of 24 and i will do the same thing let's format this code and i'll repeat the same thing for this create post as well So here you can see I'm using this create post for this two. This will be value and I'm using this icon which will be this icon. Okay, you can search this ad and you will get this exact icon. Now if I save this file, this is how it looks. Now let's align them right here. Now we can come to this nav link and here we are adding this class name, right? Now this time what I will do, I will use this function instead of these string format because inside this nav link we uh, will use this function and here what you will have let me show you that first inside this function you will get this is active and according to this is active you can style your nav link okay so here what i will do i will go to the top and let's create some common class common classes and these will be our common classes also we will use this width full padding of 2 and this padding of 2 will add padding from all around the corner okay from the four corner top bottom left and right and also here we will use this block which will make it a display block and we can use this common class and here we will also create this active class and inactive class so if this is in active state what we will do we'll use this background blue 500 and here also we need to use this text white which will make its a text white okay or what we will do we'll use this class text white directly inside this one and let's copy and paste it below i'll create another class called inactive class and i will remove this text white from here and instead of this here i will use this text gray not a background we will only use this text gray 500 inside tailwind css you can use these colors from 50 to 900 okay the higher the value will be the darker the color uh, will be now i will add these two spaces and here we will use this common class plus this class name and also here we will this common class plus this class name and here now we can use this is active then we will use this active class otherwise we will use this inactive class 
now if I save this file let's see if something happens or not and as you can see if I am in the home page this home page is now decorated now if I click on this create post now this is decorated now if I close this then you can see this is how it looks the first thing that I want to do is I don't want to overflow this text to the next line so for that what we can do we can use this class name inside this uh, one this common classes white space no wrap okay now if I save this file let's see if something happens or not yes that's what we want ladies and gentlemen and now inside this span what I will do I will add some class name according to this is active or this closed nav state so for that what we can do we can simply pass this state as the prop of this closed nav or nav bar closed nav let's save this file inside this nav bar we can destructure it right here and we will pass this to this one closed and this will be same thing so let's copy this and paste it here as well let's save this file or oh, we can't save this file because here we need to add this classes first and we will destructure these closed right here like this and now we can use this closed now what basically we are doing we are fetching this closed state of, of this navbar from here inside this app as the prop of this navbar and we are drilling down this to our nav item now here we can add these classes so whenever this is in the closed state what i want to do i want to make its width zero because if we use some other classes we need to add those transitions as well so we already have this transition called transition width inside our tailwind config so we will use this width to animate this one okay so here if uh, this is in the closed state we will use this uh, width zero and also we'll add this transition width and uh, if not then we will use this width of what full and uh, we can also use this transition width like this now let's save this file and let's see if this works or not but before that ladies and gentlemen we need to also use this overflow hidden okay let's save this file and again if you want to you can separate them inside that common classes and only you can toggle this with zero and with full but i'll loop it like this and here you can see now we have this little transition okay now what i will do i'll go to this home page and i'll remove this background 100 or background red 100 so that's how it looks right now also at the top if you want to you can add that uh, icon like uh, we are doing inside this application so let's do that so for that we can go to this nav bar again where is the nav bar this one now before this ul or before this first li what i will do or what we can do we can separate these nav item and this logo so i will use this div here and here I will use this image tag and uh, we need to go to the same folder and logo.png so let's save this file and this is how it looks so I want to make it in the center and also I will change its width so we can use this class name and I'll make its width of 14 and here inside this div we can use this class name flex and items center or justify center let's save this file and let's see if it looks something or not okay that's how it looks let's add some padding as well i'll go to this div and i'll add this padding of three okay now this is how it looks and it looks perfectly fine Okay, you can move these navigations although if you are in this closed state or if you are in this open state you can do all these things now let's quickly add this search bar 
here inside this place okay so for that what i will do i'll quickly create another component called search form dot js x or you can call it search bar whatever you like it let's create this functional component and here what i will do i'll change this div to form because i want to submit this form when we press enter so for that we can use this form and if we use this input here and it will behave like the actual form if you press enter it will submit this form okay now inside here first of all let's add some class names now first of all here I want to make its a border I will give it this border and let's make its border gray 500 and I don't want to add those outline when we click on that thing so I will use this outline none and uh, because here we are using this outline none something we need to give when user clicks on that thing so we will use this ring okay and we can use this ring when we focus ring blue blue 500 so let's save this file and let's see how it looks okay so here we don't have anything and that is because we need to first render it right and also here i will give it this width of 56 let's save this file now we need to come to this app.js and i will render it after this button okay so for that what we need to do we need to use this uh, div with the class name flex and also I'll use this item center and let's move this button inside this div and here I will use that submit form or search form not submit form search form let's save this and let's see how it looks and this is how it looks and this looks horrifying guys right so what I will do first of all I will go to this one and I'll remove this BG blue hundred and let's come to the search form and here we need to change something like this uh, this color will be different okay we can use this ring blue 500 like this and when we focus we will use this ring and one now we need to remove this ring let's save this file and let's see how it looks okay it looks completely fine now I'll give some padding to this button and I'll also add that border to distinguish between these two separate sections okay so for that we can go inside this app and here inside this nav not here we have this nav right here so i will add this class name border and border right okay let's save this file let's see how it looks okay this looks perfectly fine now I'll go to this button and I'll add that padding to this button so the padding of 2 let's save this file and this looks fine so let's come to this form again search form and here I will add this rounded corner rounded like this and I will also use this padding of 1 and now if I go to this app again this is how it looks now we can add that uh, placeholder to this form so placeholder uh, will be search dot 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 let's save this file and this is not what we wanted okay this is what uh, we want now if you want to you can add some gap in between this button and this form but let me show you one more thing and let me show you that and then I'll fix that okay so below this router what I will do I will use this div inside here let's use this div and I will use this lorem of 5000 let's uh, use this lorem 5000 it will render the long 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 text and as you can see this is how it looks and when I try to scroll this you can see this uh, nav bar and this form will go away from this screen and if you don't want that so what we will do let's come all the way up 
and uh, inside here we can use this uh, div with the class name sticky sticky and uh, let's use this top zero and I wrap this nav bar inside this sticky thing and you can see this nav bar is always on the top and what we can do we can do the same thing for this nav as well so let's come down and uh, I will use that sticky thing here as well now I will use this sticky top zero and I wrap this div like this okay now if I go to this app again we will have something like this and as you can see when I scroll all the way down it is going away and that's uh, what I don't want and so for that I guess we can change something with this height and if I use this mean height of the screen I want this minimum height I want to this I want this minimum height to be 100 viewport height okay so let's save this file and uh, let's check this and okay that's uh, what we want now we can come to our app and I'll remove this text from here like this okay now we have most of the thing ready inside our app you can see we have this navbar okay we can now navigate around these application and here we will have the search bar if I press enter it will submit this form as well but that's not what we want we will fix this but let me add some margin here after this button so what we can do we can add this uh, space thing here as well space x of 2 let's save this and okay that looks fine to me now this is the original size of this application now let's see how we can render those posts inside this app or this home component okay so for that first of all what I will do I will go to this application and create this new folder called API and here I'll create this post.js file inside this API folder also I'll create this file called client.js and inside this client.js first of all we will define those axios and things like that so first of all what I will do I'll clear out this terminal and let's install this axios now if you guys don't know what this axios is then axios is a tool or the package which we can use to talk to our backend api okay also you can use the fetch api which comes with a javascript but here i will use this axios let's clear out this npm start and now let's create our client so first of all what we need to do we need to import this axios not like this because here we are using react so we can use this import statement now it happens when you come from different environment like you now i was trying to use that const require thing but here we are working with react and when we work with you react basically what it happens with me when i work with the react and i jump to the to the react native part then i try to use bunch of things which is only available inside a react inside dom and it happens all the time okay let's uh, import this axios from axios and we can use this axios dot create and here we can pass this base url and here by the way why i'm using this base url is because uh, whenever you work with axios or these uh, api requests you need to add those urls right so here what we can do we can add this http colon localhost not colon local localhost http colon double slash localhost colon 4848 this is the endpoint which we are using and slash api now here this will be our base url right and what Ever we will add that will be have after this API like this post slash get latest or something like that so we can create this base URL here and we can share this base URL with our entire app so that's what we are doing here so I will call it client and we can export this client with the export default keyword like this now we have this client so what we can do 
we can simply come here and I'll export and create this method as well called gate posts and if you remember inside our backend we have API where we will accept like the page number and the limit and will send the posts right so here we will accept this page number and the limit so let me fix this quickly like this now because here we are going to use this async and await i will wrap everything inside this try and catch block like this and here what i will do i will use this client also we need to await for its result client.git and because here we are using git we don't need to include it we can simply do it like this and we already have the base url so we need to go to this post slash let's see the endpoint okay for that i need to go to my back end and let's open this with vs code so that we can see the route if i come down this is posts okay post slash posts so we need to go to this post slash posts and we need to send this limit and this thing so what i will do i will use this ternary operator here not ternary operator it's a template string okay now here i will use this post question mark which will be our query and page number and this page number will be page number and we need to use this limit and this will be let's use this dollar and curly brace again here we can pass this limit now what it will do it will give us the response and from inside this response if we destructure the data this will be the exact data which is coming from our backend api okay let me format this code and this is how it looks and i return this data from inside this try block now if you remember inside our backend let's uh, go to this ports now here we are not sending any error from inside it from inside this gate post right but if you come to this app.js then here we have this setup and it is the setup which will send at the end the error response from inside our backend API right and here you can see we are using these status scores 500 400 and things like that and these status scores are not the good thing for our react app what our react app will do it will simply throw the error if it gets those 400 and 500 response code so that will be come to this catch block so at that time we need to catch them as well so for that what you can do you can simply return this uh, error and this error dot message but here you will not have the message that is coming from your backend api which you are sending from your backend api so for that what you need to do you need to check for this error dot response or we can simply destructure this response right here from inside this error but this response will be not always be there okay this response will not always be there so you need to check if there is this response and then we will check for another thing like if there is this response dot data but if there is no response it will throw this error so we need to use this question mark here this will make it optional if there is this response dot data then we will return this response dot data now inside this response dot data what we will have we will have the exact error response which we are sending from our backend okay with that status 404 or 401 or 500 doesn't matter that will be inside this response dot data and if there is nothing like that then it means something happened inside our front end itself so we will use this syntax to send this error if this there is any error dot message we will attach this to this error otherwise we will send entire error and guys here i'm using this object and returning this error and that is because if you come to this backend api then here we are sending them 
with same structure right so i want to match this thing because let me save this file and here inside this app.js or inside this home component what we will do let me show you that first i will use this use effect hook here because if you want to get any data then you need to add them inside this use effect right now here i will create this fetch posts method now let's uh, create this now this will be our async method now here i will await and i'll use that get posts method which we have inside this post.js right let's go to this home component again now here first of all we need to pass this page number and limit and what i will do i will store this page number inside this let page number and that will be zero and let's add this page number and here also i will use this cons to create this post limit and that will be nine okay now we will pass this post limit like this now here what we can do we can destructure this thing now here we will only destructure those things which we will expect from our backend like here according to this current implementation we'll have this error or we will have the posts which we are sending from this controller these posts right so we will accept them here or expect them inside our app so let's go to this home.jsx again let me format this code and uh, i will also destructure this post first of all we will check if there is any error not like this for now i'll simply return and log this error inside the console otherwise let's log this post later we will see how we can handle these error correctly like if you see inside this actual application let me zoom out a bit and here if you try to submit this form see here at the bottom okay we will display this kind of notification or this error notification or the success notification we'll see it later but for now let's use it like this let's save this file and if i go to this app let's open the terminal then if i refresh this page then here we have nothing and here you can see it says network error and that is because we are not currently not running this backend api so we need to run this let me clear out this and npm run dev let's run this backend api as well now if i go to my app and reload the space then here we will have this error and that is because ladies and gentlemen here comes the course means now we are talking to our backend api here you can see if you notice our backend api is running on this port 4848 but we are sending this request from inside this port 3000 and so for that we need to first configure the cross cross origin thing okay so for that if you go to your browser and search for this course npm and uh, you need to first install this let's click on this result now here you can see this is the command which we can use and it's a pretty popular package as you can see right let's copy this command and now we can go to our backend we need to set up inside our backend this thing okay let me clear out this terminal let's install this course and to configure this we need to go inside this app.js and here first of all we need to import this course and now we need to use it inside this app.use so i will copy and paste it below and here i'll use this course now we can pass this course like this and if you only want to allow just single application then you can pass this origin as well now if you use this http colon double slash localhost colon 3000 
now it will only allow or it will only connect with this local host 3000 okay if you run this if you try to access this origin from anywhere else except this 3000 port it will not allow you okay but let's save this file or you can simply remove this uh, remove this origin part okay it will be completely fine okay now let me clear out this terminal and let's start the server with this npm run dev now if we go to our front end app and if i reload this now inside the front end you can see we have all these data coming from our backend api now we have solved those course thing okay here we have this author id meta slug thumbnail and this title as well now we can render them inside this home page and to render these posts inside our home page we will create an special component let's see how we can do that now after that last line this might be a fraction of second for you but this is the another day for me now let's continue writing our application now here inside this page post we have all the posts here inside this okay now i'll create a state to store these posts so i'll call it posts state post and uh, we will use this use state hook and the default value will be empty array now we can use the state post instead of this console log now we will have these posts inside this post state so now inside this div we can use this post dot map and here you can see i'm wrapping them inside the scurly brace you need to do this as well and here we'll have this post and now we can return uh, let's return this title inside this div i will render this post dot title let's save this file and let's see and this is how it looks now i want to render them in three columns so for that we can use that div or not div grid so i will use this class name grid and grid call three and gap of three now if i save this file something is happened right now now what i will do i'll create a component okay where we will render all of these posts so i'll call it post card not the that kind of post card but this will be our blog post card okay now here also i'll send this post as the prop of this post card now we'll create this post card here and let's create this functional component here we will have this post if there is no post then we will return null because here we want to destructure all of these things from this post and those will be title thumbnail and uh, what else we will render here tags meta and uh, created at those things needs to be here also here we will render this slug and i'll show you why we need this slug here but for now we need to go inside this backend api and now we need to send that created ad because we are not sending that created at and this will be post dot created at and we also need to send these tags and that will be post dot not posts post dot tags and we are changing them inside this get posts method okay now what else we need we also have this slug meta id title everything is fine so let's save this file and now i'll come to this one and now here i will use this h1 and now here we can render this title and before this h1 i will render this image where we will render this thumbnail and uh, these thumbnails are optional right so for that what we can do we can render this blank 
.jpg. This is the image which I have inside this public folder. You can also download this from the onsplash.com. Now we will use this for default image. And here inside this alt, we can pass this title. Now below this h1 title, I'll render this paragraph tag and I will render this meta like this. And here I will render this created at like this and uh, we will render them inside this paragraph tag and let's copy and paste it below and this time here I render these tags and here we can use this join because this is an array so we can use this join because here inside these tags we will have a string so that is why here we can use this join okay and then that's it let's save this and let's see how it looks for that first of all we need to import this here and here we have something wrong so let's see what this is reading join of undefined and that is because now we need to refresh this and all of the things are gone but here we also need to add this key prop and that will be let's add this key and post dot id will have these unique ids so now this error needs to be gone and here you can see we have these long created at time now to fix this what i will do i'll go and search for this date format and you will find this inside this npm package this is the package which we are going to use and you can see it is pretty popular package let's copy this install command and I'll install it inside this front-end app let's clear out this now we can import this date format here not here inside this postcard import date format like this and uh, we can wrap this date inside this date format method and also as the second argument we can pass this format options like here if you come down then you can see these are the options which we can name use these are the options name which we can use what i'm talking let's use this one so i'll use this medium date not time medium date let's uh, paste it here now if i save this now let's start the server and let's see how it looks okay npm start and now as you can see this is how it looks now let's style this postcard so first of all i'll add some style to this h1 and uh, what we will do or we will use this text lg and we will use this font semi bold and here also we will use text gray text gray 700 and that's it let's uh, go to this paragraph tag and here i will use this uh, text gray 500 okay now we can come to this div but before that let's use this div with class flex and uh, here uh, we will add this class names for these paragraph tags and those class names will be text gray 500 and uh, i will use this text of small let's save this file and let's see how it looks this is how it looks let's uh, use that justify content or justify between because here we don't have that justify content we need to use this justify between okay now also what i will do i will use this div with the padding of two and wrap all of these contents like this because i don't want to wrap this image inside this div because i want this image to be full width and this is how it looks and if you notice here we have something different right and that is because currently inside this app.js while i'm testing this app i'm using this background color here 
this background 100 gray 100 now inside this what I will do I will go to this team and let's add this class name and I will make it BG white and also we can add the shadow of small let's save this file and let's see how it looks and this is how it looks let's uh, give it this rounded corner as well rounded like this and this is how it looks ladies and gentlemen now here you can see I have this longer meta description for this one but here we don't have that so first of all I want to specify some length for these meta descriptions and also I will do something else and I'll show you guys what I mean first of all inside this meta we can use this substring this is the method which we can use to make these substrings like this I'll use this length of 80 and after that I'll add this three dot at the end and uh, here this is how it looks now and to align them properly here you can see this date is here and this date is here and this is a little bit uh, weird so for that what we can do we can go all the way here and we can add this flex flex call because we don't want them side by side we want them horizontally not horizontally or vertically so here inside this div now we can use this flex of one because we will use this entire width and again we will do the same exact thing here as well and I will use this justify between let's save this file and let's see how it looks and as you can see this is how it looks okay now we'll add those buttons here to delete and edit these posts so for that after this div or inside this div what I will do I'll use this another div or we can copy and paste it below and this time I will not use this justify between here I will use this space x of 3 okay now instead of these two paragraph tags here I'll render button and two of them okay let's format this now inside these buttons I want to use some icons and for that I'll not waste your time I already showed you where you will get those icons so I'll directly show you guys which icon I'm using okay now these are the two icons which I'm going to use these are from inside this bootstrap you need to use this BS here okay now I'm rendering them inside these buttons now inside these buttons I will add some class names as well also what you can do you can create separate component for these things if you want to but for now I will go with this one okay now the first class name that I want to use here is I want to give them some width and height of 8 okay also I'll make it surrounded full and here I will use some background color as well so the first background color that I want to use background blue 400 for this edit one and here I'll use this background red 400 and I'm using these because here I want to add hover effect as well so let's use this hover and BG for this one I'll use this background red 600 and for this one I'll use this blue 600 okay now let's add some more classes here like this flex and I'll use this justify center and items center let's save this file and let's see how it looks and this is how it looks now we will add them um, this class names like text white as well and it looks perfectly fine but uh, let's use some padding to separate them okay so I'll add these paddings for this time and this tags okay I will use this padding of Y and 2 let's save this file and this looks perfectly fine now inside this edit icon instead of this button what I will do I will use link tag because here what we can do let's use this link tag first and we need to import this link from inside this react after Tom now here I will pass this to and this will be update update post 
slash the id okay so for that what we can do we can use this curly brace and we can use this template string here like this and here we can pass this slug let's save this file and now if i go to this app and if i click here it will move to another screen but here we have this not found and so for that now we need to set up this router inside our app.js we already have this update post here but now we need to use the slug as well like this okay now you can see we are inside this update post that's so nice right now we'll see how we can update this post once we create that uh, form where we will have that create post and update post method but for now this looks nice now also we will handle this delete part but for now before that we need to handle the pagination part because now what i did inside this application let me show you that first i will open this mongodb compass now currently inside our database we have these 12 posts but we are only rendering these four po nine posts right and now we need to fetch other posts as well so for that we need to have paginations but before that let me fix one more thing if you notice here we have this image and the size of this image is different and size of this image is different and to fix this we have very interesting class name inside tailwind css called aspect ratio so we can add this class name directly to this image and the class name will be aspect video now here you can see we have these three class names aspect auto which we are currently using okay and square will make it square and video will make it in a landscape format okay let's save this file and now you can see the change guys all of the images are in those video aspect ratio okay like 16 is to 9 now what i will do i will go to this back end and i will first do something and show you guys what i am doing here okay now to create paginations we need to have actual documents count so for that we can use this post dot count documents method to count all the documents okay now i'll call it post count and we will send this post count inside here and i'm sending this inside this get post method right and because i'm doing this let me show you why i'm doing this because inside this get post method we are sending this request to our this route where we have this get post as the controller right so we need to send this post count right here let's save this file and now we'll have this post count uh, here so we need to destructure that now we will store this post count inside another state so let's create this new state and i'll call it total post count so i will use this total post count inside here and now we'll set this post count right here okay now we have the post count here inside our front end but with just this post count we cannot create our pagination to create pagination we need to have exact length with this page limit okay because per page we are rendering nine items so we will have this total post count 12 but we have this post limit 9 so now we need to divide that total post count by this 9 but we will get that value in decimal but we need to convert that value to something else so that we can create array from that and we can render our pagination now it sounds like very complex but let me show you what i mean okay now if we go to this console now here we will have this 12 item and uh, we have this 9 item per page 
this will be our actual length of the or count of the document okay now if i press enter then you can see this will be the value and we cannot use this value to render our paginations we need exact value so for that if you use this math dot floor method what it will do it will floor down this to one and we don't want that so we cannot use this here but here what we can do we can use this number okay and we can use a little formula here now we will use this module one and we'll check this not equal to zero and you can see it says true if this condition is true then it means there is something after this nine or there is more posts than our nine posts okay so for that we can use this logic let me show you how we can use this logic okay so here what i will do i will create this gate pagination count method and here we'll pass this total post count now we will create this method outside of this component and i'll call it length and here we can divide this length by this post limit and we will get our division okay now here we have this division so what we can do we can use this if this division modulo one is not equal to zero it means we have something after this one so here what we can do math dot floor now this division will round it to the lower value it will remove all of the floating value and we can add this one now we can return this value if this is not the case then we can directly return this division now it sounds like complex okay but let me show you how this function will work okay now inside here i'll refresh this for now now i'll paste this code and here inside this gate pagination count method what i will do first i'll pass this 12 and it throw this error and that is because we don't have this post limit let me add this manually here we'll use this 9 okay now if i press enter again i'll use that same thing and here you can see we have this two it means now we can render two pagination icons okay but instead of this if i use this 18 we will have this two but now if i use this 19 then we have this three it means now if we have 19 items inside our backend api then inside our database not inside our backend api what we can do we can render three pagination icons at the last one we will have only single item but we can now render three pagination icons with this little logic so let's come to our app and here we will have our pagination count so i'll call it pagination count and now we can use this new array method not like this new array and we can pass this pagination count pagination count dot uh, we can fill this array with this empty spaces now this will be our pagination pagination array i'll call it pagination array now we can use this after this div so we need to wrap it inside another div like this now here we can use this map and now because inside this pagination array we will have nothing so we can use this underscore and we will need this index so we can return these buttons and now inside these buttons we can render this index plus one because indexes are zero based right so this is the thing so let's see how it looks okay now if we come down then at the end you can see this one and two okay 
so these are our pagination now let's style them a bit so here I'll use this div wrap this pagination inside this div now I'll use some class names here and padding y of 5 and here I'll make it flex and justify center item center and we can give them space x3 and also inside these buttons what I will do I will use some class names according to the active index okay now here we can use this index is equal to page number because here we have this page number and according to these page numbers so we will render different pages and different posts right so if this index is equal to this page number we will treat them as the active class so here we can use this text blue 500 for the active one and for this one I'll use this text gray 500 and if this is active or this index and this page number is the same then we can let's see what else we can do we can render those borders so let's use this border bottom and I will change this border bottom blue 500 okay now also what I will do I will change its width to 2 okay let's save this file and let's see how it looks and at the bottom you can see we have this tiny little pagination now we don't have these logics when we click on them we are doing nothing but let's do something so for that what we can do we can add this on click listener and I will wrap this function inside another function I'll call it fetch more posts and we need to pass this index because we uh, will fetch more posts according to these indexes okay now we need to create this method so here we will have that index and now to fetch more posts we don't need to do anything because we have everything inside these fetch posts so what we need to do we need to just increase this page number count and call this function so I will change this page number to this index now here we are changing this page number equal to index means whenever user click on different pages that index will be available here so we can directly assign to this one that will be our page number and we can call this page post let's save this file and let's see the magic now if I click on this page number two then ladies and gentlemen we have another page and another post and this is our page one now if I click here this will be our page two so that's how we can set up paginations inside a react also we are using here node.js as well right or node express backend API so that's how we can do it now quickly let's see how we can delete them as well okay so for that we already have this route inside our backend API called let me hide this one where we have this one delete and we need to send this post ID so first of all I'll create this method inside this post.js this is the method which we have inside this API folder so here I'll copy this and paste it below and I'll call this method delete post okay now here we don't need these things but here we will need this post ID and uh, we'll set this post ID here so let's remove all of them now here we need to pass this post ID let me format this now this time this method is delete so we need to change it to delete like this and everything will be the same now let's save this file and now we can come to our home.js not home.js inside this postcard now if you come down here we have this button where we are rendering this delete icon so now here we can attach this on click listener and here what uh, we will do we will wrap it inside another function because we need to send this post id as well so i will call this method on delete 
click and here what we will do we'll send entire post okay let's send this entire post let's copy this accept it as the prop of this component now we can save this come to this home component and we can now pass this on delete click here also what you can do you can simply use this method inside here because you will have that post right here as well so what i will do i will make it easier so let's remove this i'll copy this one or we can copy this everything because we will paste it there okay so only pass this method like this let's save this file now here we can do like this okay and i'll call this method handle handle delete now i'll format this and this is how it looks now we can create this method i'll copy and paste it below so here we will have this post and we can simply destructure this id like this and instead of this we will use this await delete post now we need to pass this id here and let's use this async like this and when we delete this what we will have we will have error or we will have message because if you go to our backend api we are sending error or we are sending this message if everything goes fine so we will check if there is any error for now we'll just return and log it to the console otherwise let's log this message let's save this file but one more thing what if we click this delete button accidentally right so for that here we will use built-in confirm module from inside browser so we can use this confirm and here we can pass this message are you sure okay now we can store its value inside this confirmed and let's check if there is no confirmed then we will simply return this otherwise we will remove them not them remove single post now if i save this file i guess we will see some error here and that is because we don't have this confirm okay so for that here we need to use this window dot confirm okay let's save this file and let's see now we don't have that error and that is because of we are uh, we are trying to use this confirm model and uh, we need to use it like this inside the react okay now if i click on this delete it will ask me are you sure and if i click ok then it removes this but now we also need to remove it from our ui okay so for that what uh, we need to do uh, if message is okay everything is fine then here what we can do we can use this uh, let's call it new posts and we will use these posts which we have inside our state and we can use this filter method okay here we'll have this post and we'll check this if this post dot id is not equal to this id then we'll return that post and create a brand new array now we can use this set post and we will pass this new post like this let's save this file and now you can see we have only these 11 items now if i try to delete this one you can see the change right now if i remove one more now we just have these nine posts but here we also have this pagination icon let's remove this and for that we can simply come down and here we will check if there is this pagination dot length only then we will render them here okay so pagination array dot length then render this otherwise we will render null 
let's save this file and let's see how it looks and now again there is something and that is because we have this length here of one so what we need to do we need to check if this length is greater than one or greater than or let's save this file greater than one okay now we don't have that pagination also let's give some of the padding bottom to this one padding bottom of five now it looks fine also if we want to we can delete these posts and you can see the change right now let's handle the search bar now I press enter it will submit the form but we don't want this behavior also we want to have the data which we are searching here right so for that if you come to our backend API here inside this router so we have this search so let's uh, go to our front end and let's create this method I'll copy this delete method and paste it below this time I'll call it search post search post and here we will have this query now post slash search will be endpoint and here we need to send this query title equal to this query okay this will be the get request like this now we can save this file and let's come to what we will do for to search these posts if you notice here if we are inside this create post we will have the search bar if we are inside this home page also we will have these posts also if I go to this update post route also then we will have this search bar so we need to have search logic at the top level because we want to allow our user to search from any component right so for that con context API will be the good choice so inside this src I'll create this new folder called context and I'll call it search provider dot gsx now inside here we will create our context first of all we need to have this search context and we can create the search context because we have this create context method inside our react okay now we can use this search context here inside the search provider search context dot provider like this then here we will render these children okay now we need to destructure the children's from here and now inside here what we will have we will have this search result set search result and we'll use this user state and this empty array and then uh, what we will have here for now let's use it like this okay and here we can save these values we'll save this search result and also we will create this method called handle search and now we need to create this method here which will handle the searching and creating these search results this method will accept this query and the job to send this query will be the search form okay search form will send this query now here we can use this await search post method which uh, will be available inside this api slash post now we can pause this query right here now we need to wrap this function inside this async now also if you want to you can add those other ma other states like searching and things like that to show a user some indicator searching indicator okay but here what I will do I will simply destructure it right here and here we will have this error or we will have what we will have results or posts let's see inside our backend API if I go to the search post method then we will have these posts so here we will have these posts 
and if there is error and we already know that for now we are just logging them inside our console but later we will create another component which will render these error properly okay otherwise if there is no error let's uh, pass this post right here also i'll create another method called reset search and uh, let's uh, not use this async here we don't want to do anything like this we'll simply set its value to default empty array like this okay now we'll also pass this reset search and now we can save this file but what i will do i will create another hook custom hook called a huge search and here we can use this uh, use context hook and we can simply pass this search context now what it will do it will create this hook and we can export it like this and inside this huge search all of these things uh, will be available now if you feel confused here then uh, first of all let me explain what i'm doing and if you guys are still confused then i already have a detailed video in the same exact topic you can watch that i will provide its link in the description box below first of all we are creating this context right here and uh, we are creating this context provider here inside this search provider component and inside here we will accept the children's and we are rendering them here and whatever whichever com component that we render inside the search provider there we can use all of these properties we have inside this value okay now if we don't do this then what we need to do wherever we want to use this context or these values we need to use this use context hook and pass this search context so we don't want to do that that's why here we are creating this custom hook okay now again i'm telling you guys i already have a detailed video in these topics so i'm not going to do deep in these things so i'll simply save this file and now what we can do we can go to our index.js and we can wrap this app inside our search provider not like this search a provider and now let's save this file and then here inside this home component because we are wrapping this app inside the search provider and inside this app we have this home so we can now use this use state or use search hook inside this home so here i will simply destructure this search result like this from inside this use search hook now if there is search results then what we will do instead of these posts we will render those search results okay so search results search result if there is search result then we will use this map post and then we will do exactly this thing so let's copy them paste it here now we need to use some logic as well if this search result dot length then we will render this otherwise we will render this post dot map okay okay now we have this setup if there is search result then we will render these search results otherwise we will render the actual post okay now we need to have search logic so for that let's go to this search form and inside here first of all we need to let's uh, create this state called query and i will use this use state hook here and default value will be empty string now here first of all what we need to do we need to assign this value to this query not query assigned to this query to this input value query let me format this and here we will use this on change method 
and here we will have this event from inside this event we can directly destructure this target and then here we can use the set query method and target dot value like this now this will handle the query changing part or this input changing part now we need to have this on submit inside this form whenever we press enter this on submit method will be fired so let's create this handle submit outside of this return statement and here we will have this event and we will use this event to prevent the default behavior we don't want to submit this form right after pressing this enter we want to handle this on our own okay so for that we, uh, we can use this e dot prevent default okay now after that we will use that method which we have inside the search provider so we will use this handle search method but for that we need to first import it from inside this use search hook like this and inside this method now we need to pass this query okay if this query dot trim if there is no query and if user is pressing enter without any value inside the input field we will simply return this okay now if we call this method what it will do it will simply search these query and add them inside this search result and we are destructuring the search result right here so we will have them right inside here and if there is any length it will render this result so that's uh, what it is doing okay let's save this file and let's see if it works or not but for that let me search this title here and we get this error and uh, why is this and that is because I guess we are sending some different data from inside this search controller now we need to go to our get posts method and uh, we will send same exact data so we need to copy all these things and I will change them like this let's save this file and now if I refresh this okay and let's copy this title and it works completely fine right because if I reload this then you can see the change it is working completely fine but we have all of the post with same title so you will not see any different here but let me add something different okay I will go to my postman and I will add one and two posts with different title and I'll back now if I refresh this page then here you can see now I have these two different posts with different title what I will do I will search for this how to and you can see the change but also we have this pagination right now we don't want to use this pagination when we are in the search mode so for that what you can do you can also add another condition here and search results dot length let's save this file and why is this and that is because we need to now use this not operator here let's save this file if there is no search length only then it will render that pagination okay now here we don't have any way to reset this form for that you need to reload this page and one thing more what we can do inside the search form inside this input we can add this on key down and let's uh, create this method handle reset so we can create this handle reset right here and inside this event you will have this key I guess let me see this e dot key 
if I save this and let's open the terminal now if I click here then you can see oh, we will have this right let's copy this and here we are getting this error and that is because not this is not error this is warning and that is because we are not giving any key to this button okay let's use this index and save this file and inside here we will check let's check for this if condition if this key is equal to this escape then we will use this reset form a reset form method and now we need to call this or first of all we need to destructure this method from inside this user use search because here inside this we have this reset search method right let me save this and if I press escape then ladies and gentlemen you can see the change right now if I search for this one and press escape now we can escape this now although here we can use this escape key to escape from inside the search bar here I want to also render that icon which will close this search bar so for that here what I will do below this input I'll render this button and inside this button I will render this AI outline close this will be our icon and now we need to import this icon from inside our react icons from react icons ai and let's come down inside this button i'll use some class names first of all i'll make its position absolute and here we are making its position absolute we need to go to this form and let's make its position relative okay now we want to render this icon only if there is search result okay search result dot length otherwise we will render null now we need to import the search result or destructure the search result from inside this huge search hook and then i'll use some more classes here first of all i'll give it this top one by two which will make it uh, 50 percent from the top and let's use this translate y one by two and also let's use this minus what it will does it will translate this uh, by 50 percent minus 50 percent okay now also here i'll use this text gray 700 and then what else uh, we will use here let's save this file and let's see how it looks first okay and if i search for something then we have this icon here i want to render it here so we need to use that right property as well right of three let's save this and now it is in the perfect place now when we click on this button we need to reset this form so for that what i will do here we already have this handle reset right and uh, i will copy this or cut this out and i'll create new method here called handle key down because here we are using it inside this handle key down right handle key down and let's paste that code here now i'll pass this method inside here now i'll pass this handle reset to the on click of this button okay like this now inside this first of all we will reset this also we will set the value or set this query to empty string okay now let's save this file and now if i press here you can see the input is reset and the result is also reset that's uh, what i want also if we press this escape key what it will do it will reset the search but here we are not resetting this form if you want to you can do that as well let's uh, copy this and okay that's it now what we need to do we have this search we have everything now let's come and create this uh, create post form okay now it will take a little bit of time because this form has lots of things to cover 
so what I will do I will move this home or this browser here and let's uh, write some code so I'll go to this create post and here we will write this form but later we will move this form to its separate component okay now I'll go here let's close this search bar and let's come to this create post and now first of all here we will use this form and inside this form we want to render these things and here you can see that's how it looks first of all let's create uh, the left side part and first of all we have here this title and these some buttons okay so I will use this flex justify between and uh, also let's use this item center and here what uh, we need uh, we need that title so h1 and let's use some class names here text xl and uh, font the uh, semi bold text uh, gray 700 okay then what else we need let's render this title first create post and that's how it looks let's render this create new post and then after this so we need those buttons right so after this h1 I will render another day with flex and uh, we will use this items center now inside this deep we need to render three buttons which will be our reset view and this post okay so uh, let's uh, create these three buttons first of all we will render this reset and uh, this uh, view uh, which will allow us to view our form or our post like this okay we will use this model to view our post and then we will have this post this will be the button which will post this form now let's save this file now if you come here inside this reset and this view we also have this icon so I will quickly add those icons here now here we have these icons also I'm wrapping all of these text inside this reset and that is because I want to give some class names to these two buttons so let's add these class names and here if you want to you can create separate component for these uh, buttons okay but here I will go over with this one first of all I'll make it a uh, class flex and item center and also let's give it this space x2 now if I save this file that's how it looks also let's give them padding x of 3 and that's how it looks now I will give them ring a ring of one which is uh, like the border but not actually border okay also here we can change this uh, ring color ring blue 500 and uh, that's how it looks now also I will give this rounded class and then what I will do I will give them some class name height of 10 and uh, there is region to giving this height of 10 okay and that's how it looks now what I will do I will go to this one and let's use this space x3 and that's how it looks or let's change it to 5 okay now we will style this post button as well but before that let's uh, change their color as well text to blue 500 also we can give them hover effect like hover text to white and hover or oh, when hover oh, we will make its a background blue 500 okay as you can see also oh, we can add these transitions like this and uh, you can see guys this is how it looks you can use as much class names as you want to make these buttons beautiful okay 
now i'll say some of these class names for this post as well so i'll format this code like this and uh, we don't need this flex properties and also we don't need this one but this time i will give it this padding x of 5 i don't want to give it this a ring of 1 but uh, we will give this ring whenever we hover on this button otherwise uh, we will make its uh, background blue 500 rounded will be fine we don't want to give it this height and what we will do we will use this text white here because we have this background blue okay and whenever we hover on this uh, we will use this text blue 500 and then whenever we hover we will give it this ring not like this so we will make its ring color blue 500 let's save this file and let's see how it looks and this is how it looks but this time we need to change its background color whenever we hover on this transparent let's use this hover transparent let's save this and that's how it looks but it doesn't have this width or this height we need to handle that as well and for that what I will do I will give it this a width and height both of these things okay width 10 and not width 10 height 10 and width 36 and that's how it looks now if I make it bigger then you can see this uh, will be the end result okay now let's come down and below these buttons or these sections so we need to render this radio button okay and uh, we will do that as well so here what i will do i will go and use this input and uh, input type will be checkbox okay and uh, if i save this file you can see this is how it looks here at the corner and that's uh, not what we want right and that is because of this div here we are using this flex now we need to make this checkbox outside of this div and now this checkbox is here and I don't want to use this default checkbox if you want to you can do that but let's use this hidden and first of all I'll wrap it inside this div because here I want to use this label and label will be for checked this uh, check icon we will use this radio button for our featured post so I will call it featured and now we need to use the same ID here like this only then we can use this label and inside this label first of all I will use this featured text but this time we need to use span okay let's use it like this now if I save this file you will see something like this and I don't want this design so what we will do we will use this div okay and inside this I'll add some class names first of all I will give it this width of 4 height of 4 and I'll make it rounded full and I'll give it this border not dash border border blue 500 and I'll make its border 2 and if I save this file that's how it looks now here what I will do also I will attach another div I'll add another div inside this div and I will use all of these class names so let's copy them paste them here and this time I'll make its a width 2 height 2 and this time we will not use its border color we will use this background color we don't want its border let's format this and you will see this tiny little blue here but uh, uh, we will use these class names here flex not call flex uh, item center and justify center and that's how it looks and that's what I want now I want to make this circle and this span side by side so for that inside this label we can use some class names like flex item center and I will use this space x of 3 or let's 
use this two and that's how it looks now I will change its color or we can change this color right here text blue 500 or what I will do I will use this text gray 700 and I will use the same color for these indicators as well let's save this file and that's how it looks now also what I will do I will go to this level and I'll keep this cursor pointer and as you can see the change now what we can do if we hover on this icon or the checkbox we need to change its color so for that you can use this group we can group all the hover effect okay so for that inside this div and this div what I will do I'll use these group group hover and we can change the color the first thing that I will change border gray not gray border blue 500 okay and I will go to this one and I will make its background blue 500 and this time we need to go to this span and let's add this class name when we hover on this group group hover and we will make its text blue 500 now if I save this file that's how it looks also if you want to you can add that transition effect as well okay now below this label now let me fold these codes okay now this is our label so let's add these text or this comment as well so what will be the comment check box or we can call it featured check box and I'll come up and let's fold this code up and here oh, we will use this title and submit okay now let's come down below this checkbox what do we will render here we will have our title input okay title input now we need to create this input so for that here I will use this input type will be text okay now let's uh, lay use some class names here the class name that we want to use here is first of all I want to make its text XL and then we will also let's use this placeholder so that we can see something here and the placeholder will be post title now if I save this file that's how it looks and we don't want this border at first or this outline so we can use this outline none and I will use this ring when we hover or not hover focus on this thing because we are not using this outline so we need to use something to give user a feedback and if you want to you can change this ring color okay but I will not do that and also I will make it surrounded not rounded full rounded then I'll give this padding of 2 and I'll make it so width full and let's see how it looks that's how it looks also I want to give this font semi bold and that's how it looks now below this input what I will do I will render this text area which will be our markdown input okay first of all here I'll remove all of them and I'll add this placeholder and I will use this placeholder and if you see here we have this handle with uh, using this handle we can resize this text area and I don't want this I want to give it this fixed height so first of all what I will do I'll use this class name and we can use this resize none and if I save this file this is how it looks now give it this width of full and what I will do I'll use all of these class names okay let's copy them and paste them here and that's uh, what it looks right now and there is no gap right so to give them some gap what we can do we can go to this form and let's add this class name padding y of 3 not padding y sorry here we need to use this space y of 3 let's save this file and that's how it looks also let's give it this padding of 2 
and as you can see it looks nice okay now let's come down below this text area what we need we need to have this tag input and this meta description and we can create them so easily for this tags input what i will do i'll copy this title input go below this one and let's change this to tags input and this time we don't want this uh, font uh, bold thing and uh, we will need this with full and if i save this file and also we don't need this text excel here and this time what i will do i will use this label for this tags let's uh, render this tags here now if i save this file this is how it looks and here we have gap and i don't want that so we can wrap them inside this div like this and let's save this file and uh, after this what i will do i'll copy this text area and i'll first copy and paste this text tag input and i'll change it to meta description meta description input and instead of this input i'll use this text area let's format this code and i'll change this to meta description let's copy this and meta description now because here we are using this tags html4 we need to use this id tags here as well and we need to do the same thing for this text area as well id and meta and let's change this to meta let's save this file and that's how it looks now i don't want to use this placeholder here let's change it to meta description like this and here also we are using this font semi bold i don't want this here and i also don't want this inside this text area so let's remove this okay now for this meta description input i want to give it this height of 28 okay now that's how it looks but i want to give this markdown editor a full width so for that not full width full height so for that what i will do i'll go to this form and here i'll use this flex flex call and uh, i will come down and inside this text area i will use this flex of one and to work this we also need to assign some height to this one so i will use this height screen and now this is how it looks now if i type something when we type longer word or longer sentences inside this markdown input it looks a little bit uh, weird for me so for that what i will do i will change the font of family and things like that inside this markdown first of all we can change this font to mono and uh, let's uh, give this tracking tracking wide now this font mono will change its font to mono and this tracking white it means we are adding some later spacing as you can see and here also i will change this to text lg and okay this looks fine now if i make this form bigger then this is how it looks but if you come to this form then here you can see at the left we have this actual form and at the right we are rendering this markdown hint and this actual thumbnail input but we forgot to render this button so we will create this button after this input so let's first create that thing and we will have this after this title input so i'll call it image input and let's uh, copy all of these things or not we will go to this one and we'll copy this button this view one okay let's copy this i will fold all of this code and here i will change something so first of all i want to change this icon and i'll render this icon first icon second and this text first so text will be place image and let's render different icon and the icon that i am going to use is this i am file picture and let's import it now if i save this file 
this is how it looks as you can see and I want to first change its color from this blue to gray and I'll use the 700 here 7500 700 and that's how it looks and as you can see here we have this form all the way to here right and we don't want that and we can fix this so easily because here we are going to render another component after this button because if you notice here if I select any image and upload this image and then here at the right side you can see we are rendering this input and inside here we'll have the uh, image URL and we can click here to copy this so that's what we want so here we will render our input so for that here what we can do but this time here we are rendering this button and we don't want this button we want a label here because here we are going to use this input and type will be filed now we can save this and that's how it looks but we can make it hidden okay and we need to wrap them inside this div let's uh, wrap them inside this div like this and let's uh, use those html4 and this id id will be image input and this time this needs to be html4 okay now if I press here it will open this file input but uh, also I will use this cursor pointer okay now inside this div we can not inside this we need to wrap them inside another div with this display flex property now we can add this div inside this div and after this input or in after this div what I will do I'll render another component for that image input okay url input so uh, we will use another div here and again here we need to use this class name flex and uh, let's save this file first because here i will use this input text and uh, first of all i'll pass some value here just to see the progress okay let's come to here and i will copy this image url paste it here now if I save this file that's how it looks and that's what we don't want so let's use some class names to this input and the class name that I want to use is first of all I want to make its background transparent like this and then also after this input what we will do we will render this button okay to copy this thing and here I will use this copy and the copy icon itself now let's import this icon now if I save this file this is how it looks now currently we can edit this input field and I don't want that so here we can use this disabled okay now we cannot edit this one but here inside this button I will use some class names like text extra small and I'll use this text center as well and here this text center is not working so let's use this flex and justify center okay and also we need to change it to flex call not a flex row okay again it is not working like that so we can wrap it inside a span like this let's use this item center here okay this looks fine but this time we will go with this one and let's uh, give it this background color gray 500 or 400 will be fine okay now I want to give some gap here so we can go to this div and let's add this space x of 2 okay that's fine now we can come down and uh, what we will do let's give this input a full width okay so for that we can go to this one and here we can use this flex of one and now this looks fine and here what I will do I will use this justify between as well because here we are already using this flex right so that's how it looks
also let's use this rounded corner not full rounded and i'll use this overflow hidden not like this overflow hidden okay now this is how it looks now i'll come down to this input and inside this input after this bg transparent i will use this padding x of 2 and that's how it looks now i'll come to this button now because we are using this uh, flex call or flex of one we can use this justify or self stretch self stretch like this and here what i will do i'll also use this justify center that's how it looks now i'll give it this padding of one or we can give it this padding of two one will be fine okay and also here what i will do i will use this background gray 700 text white and i'll this i'll give this text white to this input as well and that's uh, how it looks right now okay now we have this kind of look and uh, we will hide this input field when we don't have this image selected okay but we will see that later and here you can see we have this longer text but we are rendering it only inside this place so what we can do we can go here and let's say use this width of full and okay this looks nice now uh, we will work on this right side okay now we will render this thumbnail selector and this markdown editor now what i will do i will display it like this because here we want some more space now inside this form we are going to render two separate components or separate uh, sections so for that here i will assign them specific width okay so for that here what i will do i'll create this div with this class name with 9 by 12 now if you hover over on this class name then here you can see it will assign this 55 percent of width and also here we need to assign this screen space x and all of these things i'll cut this out and paste them here I will only use this padding inside this form now we can wrap all of the things that we just created inside this div okay now I will come down and I'll paste it like this and if I save this file then you can see width is now changed now we will use the rest of the width for our this section okay so i will go all the way to the top and i'll fold all of this code like this not like this like this now after this div what i will do i'll copy this div for now let's uh, copy all of them paste them here and i'll change some of the class names like here we will use this width one by four and if you hover over on this again we will use this 25 percent okay we don't need this height here and we don't need all of these things so let's remove all of them okay now first of all here i will render this h1 h1 and uh, let's render this text thumbnail now if i save this file let's come to this one and we have this thumbnail right here but we don't want that here so for that inside this form we need to use this flex and that's how it looks right now and inside this let's use this padding of 2 again and uh, padding x of 2 we don't want this padding y okay that's fine now after this thumbnail or here we can add some class names like text uh, xl and uh, font semi bold and text uh, gray 700 and that's how it looks now after this thumbnail after this h1 i will render that input which will be file input and uh, i don't want this to be so or let's use this hidden one and uh, what we need to do let's use this div to wrap this input because here i'm going to use this label to style this input 
and this will be our thumbnail so let's say copy this and we need to add this id as i already told you like this now if i save this nothing will be displayed but here what i will do now i will go inside this label or inside this label i will use a div with some class names like border okay and uh, we will use this border dashed or we can call it dashed border border dashed okay and border gray 500 now if i save this file that's how it looks and here i want this to be looks like a image file okay so for that as we already discussed here we can use our video aspect okay aspect video and that's how it looks okay now inside here i'll render some text to display it like the input field from where we can select image so this will be thumbnail and if i save this file that's how it looks now here i will use this span and here what i will do i'll use this text select thumbnail and uh, select thumbnail and let's uh, use one more thing here or i'll remove this thing let's copy not like this let's copy and paste this span and uh, recommended size recommended size let's copy and paste it below 1280 into 720 let's save this file and that's how it looks and uh, i don't want this it's okay first of all we'll change its uh, text uh, gray 500 okay and uh, i will use some class names here like this flex flex call justify center item center and that's uh, how it looks right now now what i will do i'll go to these two spans and i will use class name like uh, text extra small and that's what i want let's use this cursor pointer to this label class name cursor pointer and if i go to this one and if i click here it will open this input field okay now also here inside this h1 we can give it this margin bottom of two like this and it looks nice okay now after this here we need to render that markdown input or markdown hint like this and we will do it after this div because here inside this we inside this div we are rendering this input right after this div we will render another div with this class name busy white and inside here what we need okay let's render this h1 markdown or let's text this copy this text from here general markdown rules and here i'll use some of the class names like uh, font uh, semi bold and if i save this file that's how it looks first of all i want to move it uh, in the middle from the top so for that i can use this position absolute not here inside this div position absolute top uh, one by two as we already know here we need to translate it with uh, this translate translate y one by two also we will use this minus because we want this minus 50 percent and here also we need to because here we are using this position absolute we need to go to this div and let's make it relative like this okay now i will move this heading to the center text center and uh, that's uh, what uh, we want no okay it is fine now here inside this 
I will use this padding of 2 or padding X of 2 and padding Y of 4 and now it looks something now we will use this rounded and uh, let's add some more thing below this heading because if you come here we are rendering some of these some of these rules okay so for that what I will do I will first copy and paste some rule okay now I'll come up and here I will paste these rules and I am going to call it MD rules and here we don't have any fancy thing we just have this title and this little markdown rule okay just to show the hint now if you want to know where I get all these rules then you can search for this markdown rules and uh, here you will get the search result like this okay if I click here now these are the rules which we need to use to write markdown okay now also at the end we will render this link if you want then you can click here to find out more and we will open that exact link okay so now because here we have this MD rules so after this h1 we will render this ul and here we will use this MD rules dot map and here we will have this item and let's render or return this div and inside here not div here we we are going to use li because we are rendering these list items and here let's uh, render this paragraph tag and because inside this item we will know we will have this title and this rule so let's destructure this title and this rule now here we will render this title copy and paste it below and rule let's save this file and we have something here now also we need to pass this key and that will be title or rule you can use whatever you like and let's style them a little bit okay I will add some class names to these paragraph tag first I will make it so font semi bold that's how it looks let's use this text grace 500 for this one and we'll use 700 for these actual rules okay let's copy all of these things and I'll change it over this this time we'll use this 700 also I will use this padding left of 2 and that's uh, how it looks also I want to change its font to mono and this looks perfectly fine okay and here inside this URL we can use some class names like this space y of 2 and this looks fine now at the end of this ul i will render another li with this class name text center because here i'm going to render this anchor tag and let's copy this link and come to this one and this time here we will use this find out more and we'll use this target underscore blank now it will open this in a new tab also here I will use this text uh, blue 500 and it looks perfectly fine right now if we click here it will open this and that's uh, what we want now we have this form ready now we need to know how we can handle these form inputs let's see that now as you can see our form is now completely ready at least the UI part is ready now and here we have lots of reusable codes like you can see this button and this button they these buttons are same now I recommend you guys to go and create separate components wherever you find these reusable codes okay wherever we are repeating ourselves you can go and create brand new component and there you can accept this icon and this view like we just uh, did inside this nav link right you can do those things and I leave this up to you now if you come here we have this form ready and now we need to handle this form input fields so first of all let's see what kind of input 
or what kind of state values that we want and we'll write down right here and then we'll copy and paste it inside our code means we'll write what kind of value that we want for the hint or for the reference inside this markdown input field the first thing that we want inside this uh, this will be our post okay and here first of all we want this title and then we will need this thumbnail for example okay and then what we will need we will need this featured and then we will need this content itself and then we will need these tags and then we will need this meta description and what else that's it now let's go to our form and let's create these states so first of all I'll come up and here I'll create this default post and these will be the value now let's assign them some values like empty string okay now we can come down and create our state and this will be post info state post info and we can use this use state hook and let's pass this default post not delete post default post like this or we can spread all of them like this okay now here uh, we will destructure all of these values from inside this post info like uh, here we will have this title we will have our content we will have our feature we will have the tags also we will have our meta okay that's it we are not going to render or not going to destructure this thumbnail here because we cannot add this thumbnail as the value inside file input field okay now if we come down here we have this title input so here we will add this value title also I'll use this name title and it will help us to update when we want to update our input fields this name will help us okay let's copy this thing and inside here inside this input field not this one I'll come down again inside this text area this is the markdown or this will be our content okay now if we come down again here we have this tags now let's change this to tags and here we are using different placeholder tag one and tag two I will use this placeholder now we can come down again and here we have this meta so let's change this to meta okay let's uh, come down and here inside this input I will only use this name of thumbnail here we cannot pass the value okay now if I save this file currently we will not have any error I guess let me refresh this and here we have something you provide the prop on change handler okay now because we are using those value now we need to also handle hand handle change behavior of these input fields so I will go all the way to the top and uh, first of all let's uh, handle these inputs only okay I'll fold these codes and I will not use this check as well right now here we can pass this on change let's create this handle change and I'll copy this come down here we have this image input I'll fold this one I will use this here and for this tags as well come down and here we have this one so let's use this for meta as well and we will use this for this input as well for this thumbnail and uh, these things are for just those information like markdown rules now let's come to the top and here what I will do I'll create that handle change okay 
now here inside this we will have our event and from inside this event we can directly destructure this target and inside this target we will have our value and name okay now inside this target we will have this value and name so what we can do let me show you what we can do here okay we can use this state post info and here we can spread all of this post info like this post info and here we will use this name and assign this value like this now before you freak out let me show you what i am doing here okay let me go to this and let's refresh this i will open the console now here if you have any object like uh, here I will have this uh, title and title will be let's like, something okay this is our title and this is our content okay and the content is for now empty okay now what we can do if you want to you can access these values like this object or title and you will get the exact thing but also if you pass this string title here like this you will get the exact value and that's what we are doing here because inside these names will have these names okay so that's why here you can see i'm using the same name as the property name or the value here we have the same exact thing if you come down inside this thumbnail and inside this meta we are doing that same exact thing so you need to use the same name for your attribute name and then you can use it like this to save the value okay but here we have different kind of inputs so we need to handle all of those inputs like if that name not target name is equal to thumbnail so we need to handle the file input part so for that we will simply return first because we don't want to move further okay so first of all what we will do we will destructure this file or we will call it file but we cannot destructure it like this so inside this target we will have files okay inside this files we will have this array and from inside this array we will destructure this very first value and that will be our file and we can check here if this file dot type dot includes if it doesn't include this i m a g e image then it means this file is not an image file so here we also need to use this optional thing now if this is not the case then we will return and log this to our console for now or we can use this alert here okay this is not an image like this otherwise what we can do let's uh, copy this and uh, paste it here and this time we can directly assign this thumbnail like this otherwise here what I am gonna do I will create another state here and I'll show you the magic first like I'll call it selected image URL or we can call it selected thumbnail URL and we will create this set selected thumbnail url like this and use state and this will be empty string for now and here we can use the set selected thumbnail and here inside this javascript here we have this very cool thing called url dot create object url and we can pass this file like this here and it will create a url which we can use to display the selected image okay let me show you that if i come down here we have this image input we don't want this we want our thumbnail input this is our thumbnail input okay here we are rendering this div inside this label right so here what i will do i will use this set like their thumbnail url if this is there then we will render this image and the source will be selected thumbnail URL and also I will use this class name here 
and the class name will be like the same one aspect video also here I will use the shadow small let's save this file and let's see how it looks or do we have something on and that's what we want I will also make this corner rounded so we can use the surrounded like this and that's how we can render the selected image you can see this right now if I reload this this is how it looks right now if I select this image that's how it looks right now and now this is the magic that I wanted to show you guys okay now also here inside this feature if you notice we are rendering this little icon and I want to change this so for that what we can do if I click on this feature then here let's uh, copy and paste this if block okay here we will check for this if this name is for this feature and we are not using this name I guess inside this feature we need to use it inside this input field name will be featured and here also we need to pass this on change handle change okay and this time if you come to this handle changed here inside this target we will also have this checked okay we cannot use this value because we want true or false so that will be available inside this check checked not check and here inside this what I will do I will remove all of these things and I will remove all of them so here we can use this or we can simply copy this paste it here and this time instead of this value here we will use the checked and because we are inside this if block we need to return it as well and now if we come down and uh, where we have this checkbox here right and inside this level we are rendering this div to display if this is selected or not if this is checked or not so we can check this checked or this featured if this is the featured only then render this okay let's save this file and uh, we can come up and we can change its default value to where we have this checked featured okay this one let's change it to false okay that's how it looks now let's save this file now if we come here we don't have that icon but now if I click here we now have this checked that's how we can create this uh, custom checked icon but if you can see here we can select this text right and I don't like this so we can go to this featured one and here we can add this select none let's save this file and now you cannot select this text but you can use this to make it featured or not but if you see here we have this and we can select it from here as well and that is because if you come here and we are using this div so what we will do let's use this class name here and can we make it inline let's use this inline and let's see again we can do it from here as well you can see right and we don't want this and the very easy fix that we can do we can make it flex let's save this file and now we can only select it from here not from here that's fine now inside this tags what I want to do if we use this tags like a tag 1 and tag 2 like this here we will separate them by this comma okay and I only want to allow four tags so to do that uh, we will handle those four tags part when we submit this form but for now what we can do we can display some notification to the user that you are using more than four tags now we will select only four tags so for that I'll copy and paste it below and check for this tags and I'm doing it inside our handle change because we want to give live notification okay and here we don't want to return anything we'll just use this tags dot split and we'll split it with this comma and a space and I'll call it new tags 
and here we can check if this new tags dot length is greater than four then we can simply for now let's log this message later we will see how you can render these errors or warnings separately for now just log this to the console okay only four tags will be selected or we can call it only first four tag okay let's save this file and now if i go and refresh this let me zoom out a bit and now if i try to use more than four tags here like one two three four and if i try to use this five then here you can see we had this warning only first four tags will be selected okay that's what i wanted to do here and after this tags if you come down to this meta description here we can type as many tags or meta description as we want but here also i want to set this to 150 character because meta description 150 character is good for seo so here we can go to our app again and here i'll check for this last if condition here if this name is equal to meta then i will remove all of them for now and uh, what i will do here we can use the set post info itself okay let's uh, paste it here and here we will use this meta and uh, we can use this value dot sub string and uh, we will select this from 0 to 150 characters and also here what we can do we can check for this another if condition if this name is equal to meta and this meta dot uh, length is greater than 150 okay greater than 150 then only we will run this command else we will do this okay now let's save this file or what we can do we can simply return it here and uh, if you return it like this you don't need to use if or else like this okay and also just to show the user the progress like here inside here you can see we are using this so what i will do i will do it like this let's come down to this meta where we have this meta right so meta description zero out of here we can use our meta dot length and also here i will use some class names like text gray 500 and we can use the same class name for our tags input as well let's save this file and let's test our app now if you come here we have this thing zero out of zero and we don't want this we want opposite like this okay 150 out of 150 like this now if i start typing here you can see we are increasing this count but if we go to the 150 let me quickly go to the 150 and now you can see we cannot go to the 150 but here we have this 151 and for this i guess we can go to this one and change this 150 to 149 and also here we will check for this equal to 149 let's save this file not here we need to check for this we are checking for this length okay okay that looks fine now we did lots of things so let's do one more thing here when we press this button we will upload this image and for this we already have a backend uh, api route where we can upload the single image and when we upload this image to our backend api we will get uh, this image url and then we will add that url inside here so for that first of all what we need to do we can go here and if we come down 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 where we have this image input now i will remove this value instead of this here i will add another state called 
image url to copy okay let's create this state i will go up and here i will copy and paste it below and let's create this state here and now i will fold this handle change and uh, what we need to do we need to go down again here we have this image input and we need to attach this on change and what we will do let's call it handle image upload and uh, before we do anything first we need to create our helper method which can actually handle this image uploading part okay so here also we will use this async because we know that our function will be asynchronous so for that we need to go inside this post.js and i'll copy it paste it below and this time i'll call it upload image and here we will have form data and why i'm calling it form data you will know that in a bit and uh, uploading image for that we need to post this and let's see the endpoint or the route where we need to send this here we have this upload image so let's copy this and uh, post slash upload image like this and after this we need to send this form data now everything will be the same so let's save this file and come to this create post again and here we will await for this upload image and here we need to now send form data but before that we need to handle lots of other things because here we are directly attaching this handle image upload to this image input field so we need to first validate those things okay and for that we already have these codes inside here so let's copy all of them and paste it here first of all we will destructure that target and here we will have our files not like this we have all of these things here so here we have this file we are for checking the type of this image and then okay if everything goes fine then here we can create our form data form data and for that we can use this new form data like this not like this like this and here we can use this form data dot append and if you notice when we upload our image we are using this multer and here we need to pass this image so this is our field name so we need to use that same exact field name here as well and here we will pass this file okay now why we are doing it like this because as we already discussed in the previous uh, video when we talk about that uh, backend api whenever we want to upload file from our front end we need to do this as the form data we cannot send these files like json data we need to attach it as the form data right so handling file upload is different than normal text or json data so here we will have this error or we have we will have our image so here if we have any error then we will simply return and log this to the console for now and if not then we will use the set uh, image to image url to copy to this image okay now let's save this file and finger crossed let's see if it works or not and here you can see we don't want to render this if there is no image so for that i'll come down and where we have this image input we have this one so i will use this curly brace here and selected or image url to copy only then we will render this input field and uh, we are doing it i guess in a wrong place okay we need to do it right here let's save this file and uh, what the heck 
I did completely wrong here. I need to cut this one and uh, here we have this copy part right here. So let's cut this out. Now here we have this div closing part here. Let's save this. And that's uh, what we want. Now if I select any image, let's uh, select this one. And uh, something is happening or not. I don't know. If we open this, image file is missing. Image file is missing. Failed to load resources the server. Mm -hmm. And sorry for my mistake. That was because we forgot to pass this form data to this upload image method. Let's save this and test this app again. Now let's reload this so that that error needs to be gone from here. I don't like the error. And if I select okay now we have this image url here and if i copy this and paste it here now we will have that exact image here as well now we need to create that copy to clipboard method right and one more thing as soon as i press that uh, button you can see the form is submitted and this is the default behavior of these buttons and this form now whichever button i press this form will uh, be submitted and uh, to prevent this i wanted to show you guys this earlier but uh, i forgot that and here what we need to do now inside these buttons you need to use the type okay if you see here we will have these types like uh, where we have these types okay these are the types as you can see submit reset and this button so we need to use this button here Otherwise, if you use whichever button inside the form, that button will submit your form inside HTML, okay? And that's uh, what we don't want. And if you come down, we are using this image button to copy this button where we have this one. And let's save this file. Let's see. One, two, and three. We don't want to use these three buttons to submit this form. We only want to submit this form with this post button. Okay, that's what we want. Now, if I press here, nothing will happen. Okay, we learn one more thing, right? Obviously, we are learning lots of things, but here also now we need to fix lots of things to learn more. Now, here you can see if I upload these images, then I want to show you just some kind of indicator that this image is now in uploading process. Okay. So for that, what we can do, we have this button here, right? Here we are rendering this image or this icon. What we can do, we can now render another icon as well like this. This is the icon that I want to use. So let's import it. But to use this icon, what I will do, I'll go to the top and I'll add another state called busy. Or we can call it image uploading set image uploading and also we can use this state first of all let me set its default value to false now we can use this state inside here inside this image handling part if this is true okay if this is true then we don't want to select or upload any images so we can do it like this okay now if this is the case then we are returning here and now here what we can do we can use the set uh, image uploading and we can make it true and let's copy this and paste it after this thing and we'll make it false right here now we can come down and uh, we can use that state inside here image uploading if this image is not uploading then we will render this i am file picture one otherwise we will render this icon but this time we will also use this class name called animate and this will be animate spin now what this animate spin will do let me show you that first okay now if i use this class name to somewhere else uh, where i will use this 
let's use it here and let's see what it will do okay and you can see it will rotate this entire thing and we want to only rotate this icon so that's why i'm using right here now it will create that kind of illusion like we are doing something we are in progress let's save this file and now if i try to upload any image then you can see we have this little rounding icon and as soon as it finished that icon will be gone and now we have this image icon now let's create how we can copy here and click here and copy this link okay now to copy this text what uh, i will do i'll go to this one and here we have this button so let's add this on click listener handle on copy and let's uh, copy this name first before we copy the actual url right now i'll copy and paste it below just for the convenience because here we are not going to use any of these things so i will remove all of them now we uh, will not even have this thing or we don't need to use this async here now this is our function now to copy things it sounds like very weak thing to copy in clipboard but for that we just need to use three things like this navigator dot uh, clipboard dot write text and if we pass this image url to copy let's save this file ladies and gentlemen and if i come here then if i copy this and paste it here now we have that text right but here if you can notice to use this markdown or to use these image url inside a markdown or to render image inside our markdown we need to use this syntax we need to use this not operator explain explain exclamation mark and these brackets image if you want to add any image alt text you can do that inside this and then here we can add the actual url inside this parentheses so let's copy this syntax and here what i will do i will create this text to copy okay and uh, we will use this template string here instead of this dummy url here we will copy and paste this actual url or actual state and now if i use this dollar symbol here then now this will be our text to copy now here what uh, i will do i will use another text add image c or i description let's save this file and now if we copy this and if i remove everything and paste it here we have that that thing and we don't want this oh now we have this thing okay now if i copy this then we have that exact thing now here we can add our description like the image about money you can type anything because i guess this is the image okay this image is not money this is fire like burning fire this will be our image description i'm just using this for the demonstration okay now we have this copy to clipboard thing but when we copy this we need to render that little animated flash thing right that notification if i click here then you can see at the bottom we have this notification right and now we want to render that so first of all what i will do uh, let's create that component or that thing using which we can render our all of those things like the error notification or things like that so for that inside our context i will create a new context called notification provider notification provider and i'm using it or i'm creating this context because here we want to 
I render this notification in entire component, entire application, right? So that is why I am creating this context. So I will copy all of these things from inside the search context. But here we will remove lots of things. Okay. Now I'll call it notification like this. Now we will use this notification here as well like this notification provider notification context and uh, here as well and this will be our use notification and let's remove all of these values and we don't even need the search post here now let's write our actual code which will render the notification now let me tell you first why I am using this notification the name here because using this notification component what we can do we can render all kind of notification that if we want to render the error notification we can do that if we want to render a warning notification or success notification we can do that with this notification provider or this notification component okay so let's create this state called notification and here we will have the set notification and the default value will be we will use this object because here i want to use this type and this value okay now according to these types we will render different uh, background colors like the orange red or green okay so that's what we will do here now let's create a method which will handle everything we don't need to pass all these state to this value prop and so for that what i will do i'll create this update notification and everything will be handled by this method and for this method we will accept two things like this type and this value okay now if there is no type no type or no value then we will return we don't want to do anything okay and then here what we can do we can do lots of other things first of all we will render the background color so for that I'll create this state and you will understand what I'm doing here okay first of all let me clear create this background color and uh, let's uh, use the switch statement here and here we can use this type and according to this type we will set this background color let's use this case if this type is equal to error then what we can do we can simply return or we can use the set background color and uh, let's use this red or we can call it bg red because these uh, will be our tailwind css classes at the end and we need to break it like this okay now let's copy this paste it below if this case is equal to warning we will render this orange background and let's uh, copy and paste it below and this will be a success but first let me fix this spelling warning and here if this is success then we will use this green color and at the end we need to have this default as well and default will be let's use this exact red color okay that's it this is how we are going to save this background color and uh, where we will use this background color let me show you that but before that what we will do we will use the set uh, notification and here we will pass this type and this value okay and again after setting this notification we want to remove this notification after some amount of time and so for that we can use the set timeout method here and i will use this three second 
and here what we can do let's copy and paste it below this time we will change them to nothing like the default value okay but again here we need to handle one more thing if we are getting continuous error or continuous message then at that time what i will do i will use this let time out id and if you guys don't know then what uh, will happen whenever you use this set timeout or set interval method at that time it will return an id and we can assign them to this like timeout id timeout id and at the beginning we can check if there is timeout id then we will simply return and clear out the interval okay not interval clear out clear timeout okay and that will be timeout id we need to pass this timeout id like this okay so what we are doing here we will use this update notification method to update our notification and we will pass it inside this value and whenever we use this update notification from anywhere inside our components we will accept these two values types uh, type and the value itself and this value will be the message or the error or the success message that uh, we want to render and this type will be the type of the notification according to these types we are rendering or using different kind of background color and we will use this background color inside our error component okay so let's create that error component here so to do that what i will do now i want to render this error right inside or right at the bottom of any component that we are using so for that here what we can do we can check for this if this notification dot value if there is this notification value then we will render the error otherwise or notification otherwise we will render this null and to render this i will use this paragraph tag and here we will use this value or what we can do we can simply render this value or let's do it like this we don't have that much so we can do it like this now here we will use some class names okay now the class name that i want to use the first class name is the background color okay so let's call it get bg the background get background okay and i create this method here get bg and here we'll accept the color or we don't need to do all of these things because we have this background color inside this state inside this state so we can copy this but for now we need to remove it and render this empty string here and let's do it like this now we can use our common class names here so first thing that i want to do is rounded full okay padding of two and uh, what else we will do we will use this text white because we have these colors green orange or red and then what we will do we will make its position fixed the position fixed and the bottom bottom tint and again we need to use this translate minus 50 percent like this not like this because here we are not going to use this bottom but if i do it like this like right one by two then i need to use that translate x one by two why i'm not getting these suggestions and it's minus use here and uh, to see this notification first of all what I will do I'll go to this type let's say this error and value will be 
something went wrong let's save this and taste this application and again we need to use it somewhere right and so for that we can go to this one where we can go to this index.js and we will wrap everything inside our notification provider like this let's save this file and uh, here we have this error notification is not defined where we have this error line number 40 notification provider so let's see this line number 40 where we have this and sorry for my mistake this is not a notification this needs to be notification context right notification context let's save this file and let's see if the error is gone okay error is gone but we don't have that notification okay we have that notification here you can see but uh, we use some class names here and this needs to be write one by two let me fix this write one by two and we don't have this okay so let's use this left one by two and uh, where we have this we need to have it somewhere around here and as you can see we have this thing but uh, why it is not displaying and that is because we don't have this background color so and that is because here we don't have this background color bg red 400 now if i save this and we have something like this okay now whenever we uh, want to render this thing this notification i want to do a little transition and that thing will again take some time from us so how we can render that animation or that uh, transition so for that what i will do i'll change this to bottom 14 and i will change it to 10 or whenever we want to do that also i will use this opacity of zero now we need to remove and add these class names according to we render or remove them from our dom so for that the correct place to do those things is this use effect hook but we cannot do it like this we need to have a reference so inside this paragraph we need to pass this ref hook and that will be let's call it what we'll call it notification we already have this notification right so we can call it notification ref let's create this notification ref here so not here we need to create it uh, outside of this function notification ref use ref not like this use ref and now we can come down inside this use effect and here now we can use this notification ref dot current dot class list okay and uh, oh, we will not have this class list all the time so we need to use this optional like this question mark to make this optional and class list dot remove okay and uh, we want to remove what we want to remove if this is rendered then first of all we need to let's copy these things okay and uh, we want to remove these classes but to remove these things if you want to remove multiple classes then you need to use it like this okay otherwise it will not work and then let's add this bottom 10 and uh, what uh, we will add opacity of 1 okay okay now also we need to repeat this process whenever this notification dot value dot value is changed so that's what we want to do 
and now as I already told you here inside this we want to use transition and we cannot use this transition for these bottom and all okay transition so if you see here we don't have this bottom and things like that so we need to go inside this post uh, not post tailwind config and like this width here we will use this bottom so let's uh, save this file come to this one and here now we can use this bottom or what we can do we can say it all because here we are also manipulating this opacity right so we will do it for all of these things let's save this file and let's test this application and you can see that little transition right now if i refresh this again now here again i will change something like duration of 150 and uh, we can also change these is linear and things like that and you can see that little transition right and that's what we want now i'll go to this notification provider and i'll remove all of these default values like this and now we can use this notification provider wherever we want now for that you just need to use this update notification method and you need to provide these things like the type and the value so let's see this inside where we will see and uh, this create post is the better place to see this thing so here i will destructure this update notification from inside this use notification so let's uh, go to this one and i'll copy this name paste it here now inside this we are doing this alert right now here we can use this update notification and first parameter will be the type and that will be error this is not an image file or let's uh, save this file and uh, we are using this inside our handle image upload so here what i will do and here first of all we need to fix this error okay and now i'll reload everything and now try to select non-image file so i will select this one and this is not an image as you can see right so if i try to add multiple tags here also there i will display this notification so now we can copy this and where we are handling this tags section so we will have that inside this handle change right so here we have this tags and we are logging this so i will render this message and this time i don't want to say it error this will be our warning okay let's save this file and if i go to this one let me reload this again and here i will use this one comma two comma three comma four and if i try to use something else only four tags will be selected okay that's what we want right and here as you can see we are not displaying any other notification and that is because i guess of that uh, clear timeout method here we don't want to return let's move it down let's save this and now if i go to this and let's try to one two three four and now we have this message and let's say uh, wait to go away and again we have this thing but we don't have that little transition or that animation right and so for that what uh, we can do inside here what i will do i will copy these things and whenever we unmount this here i will use them and i will add this class and remove these class like this let's save this file and let's see if this works or not 
here I'll try to add one two three four and we don't have these messages but why we don't have this animation thing okay we will see that later okay for now let's uh, handle something else now if we are typing something here for example okay and at that time something bad happened and this tab closed and that time we need to save all these changes inside somewhere so for that what I will do I will go to this create post and here whenever we are handling this change we will store these inside our local stories okay at the end after setting this inside our post info we can use this local storage dot set item and here we will use this post or we can call it uh, what we'll call it blog post and here if we want to we can copy this thing and paste it here but uh, what we can do let's uh, cut this out and here we'll call it uh, post info new post let's do it like this and here we will store this new post okay and we can do it like this new post but uh, also we need to spread all of these things here and uh, we will use a json stringify method because we cannot use or store it like this json dot stringify now let's save this file and now if I go to this and let's reload everything for now and here this is my title and here this is my content and if I go to the console or this application then here let me zoom out then here we have this blog post if you can see let me zoom in a bit then if you see here we have this exact title and the content featured false and things like that okay now if I change this feature to true that will be not changed here but if I try to change here that will be changed because when we change this feature we are returning it uh, like this right now if you want to you can do it like this let's copy this let me show you how you can do that here you can spread all of these things and you can pass this featured and this featured will be the checked let's save this file and let's see if it works or not now if i change this then nothing is happening and that is because here we don't have this new post we need to have this post info and if I now change this again okay now this is happening so far so good let me hide all of these things and now whenever we reload this app then uh, now we need to render those things from our local storage inside this application itself let's see how we can do that now here what I'm thinking we'll handle this local storage part later because we are rendering this form or we are creating this form inside our create post component but we want to use the same exact form to update and create post both of these things and to render these data from inside this local storage this is the job of this create post component only we don't want to do this inside our update post form right so for that what I want to do I will copy everything from here and let's uh, create a separate component for this form called post form dot jsx now we can paste all of the things here and everything will be the same so I'll simply save this thing or save this component and inside this component create post we don't want to do anything fancy we'll only render this post form for now like this post form and uh, we need to now change its name as well to export it like post form let's save this again now if I try to import it and now we can import this now if I save this file everything will be the same inside our create post but I want to do the same thing whenever we click on this update post okay 
so for that we can go to our update post and instead of this let's uh, render that post form itself now if i go to this one now we will have the same exact form inside this create post also we'll have the same thing inside our update post as well but inside this update post we will fetch this post by this slug from our backend api and we'll render all of those data here we'll see that later how we can do that okay but for now inside from inside this post form what we will do let me handle one thing from inside this ui okay before we handle that submit part now inside this form you can see we have this markdown hint all the time but inside this form this final project inside here if i click on this form only then we are rendering this markdown hint so i want to do the same thing here as well so for that let me hide this first and what we can do let's come to this markdown hint where we have this all the way down image input okay no 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 now here we have this markdown rules right so i will cut this everything out from here now i'll create another component called markdown hint and i'll create this functional component and paste them here now we will need this markdown rules so for that we need to come all the way up let's cut this out and i will paste them here let's format this code this is how it looks and everything will be the same but this time i will copy this div and i'll go all the way down to this markdown rules where we have this okay this one and now the job of making it absolute top and this will translate all of these things okay this is the job of this container and i'll remove all of them from here those classes because here i want to add that little animation as well so we will make it like this let's save this file and now here if i render this markdown hint let's save this file and let's see the magic we have everything okay but we don't have that animation right now so to add that one first of all what i will do i will add this state here and uh, according to this state only then we will render our markdown hint okay and that state will be display hint or display markdown hint now we need to create this also here let's add this double and and we will add this right here and i'll change its state whenever we are in the focus state of this text area on focus okay then here we can use this function say hint and true okay and i want to hide this also and we will do that let's copy this and i'll hide this when we focus on this title okay for example and you can do whatever you want i am just showing you guys how you can do all these things okay let's save this file and now we don't have that hint but if i click here we will have that if i click here that will be gone now let's add that little transition effect so for that here we need to go to this and let's create this use effect hook so we have almost everything that we need inside our notification provider so i'll copy all of this thing come here i'll paste them here now i'll create this thing called container and we will have that container let's create this ref okay now we need to create this container use ref okay basically here i am creating the reference of this entire div and because now here we have this container or the reference we can 
add or remove its class names or we can do all the other things which we can do inside a DOM manipulation but this time I don't want to uh, use these classes this time what I will do I will use this translate y of 5 okay I will first uh, translate it uh, by this minus 5 in this y axis horizontally or vertically vertically okay and then I will add its opacity to 0 now let's uh, copy this thing now whenever we render this component we want to remove these classes okay uh, okay we have this opacity 0 that's fine now if we are in the rendering state then we will add this classes like this translate y0 okay which means we just want to slide it from this 5 pixel or something like that you can see this here right and here also we need to add this transition transition like this let's save this file and let's see if it works or not now and that looks perfectly fine guys as you can see right you can do whatever you want if you know what you are doing okay so that's it now from inside this post form we have everything that we need and uh, what we can do now we have this featured and I guess I am not using this featured as the value of this input so I forgot to do that now we need to pass this value and this will be featured like this okay now I guess everything is fine now we can handle submit part so for that as we already know here we can pass this on submit and uh, on submit what we will do here let's create this handle submit and now we need to create this here handle submit here we will have this event uh, and we need this event because here we will use this e dot prevent default okay because we don't want that default behavior we want to submit our form on our own so we will do like this and what i will do i will destructure all of these things here as well because now here we need to have a little validation kind of a thing because this form is very simple one so i don't want to use any validation library here but if you want to you can use formic and things like that and i already have a detailed video in these topics so you can go and watch that how we can validate our form using formic now here let's check for these little if condition if there is no title dot theme okay we will return and let's use this update notification this will be error and title is missing title is missing okay let's save this file and let's see if it works or not first of all now if i try to submit this title is missing okay now but here i guess we are using different design for this error notification so for that what we can do let's open this uh, what notification provider and here come down and uh, we are using this uh, full somewhere around here so let's remove this let's save this file and now if i go to my app that's what we want okay now inside this post form let's uh, copy and paste it below this time we'll do the same thing for our content copy and paste it below this time let's do this for this featured but this featured is not an important thing so we'll not check this one but we'll check for this tags because this is the mandatory thing and we will check for this meta description as well and uh, content is missing and here tags are missing and meta description is missing let's uh, remove this now that's how we can validate all these things but now what we need to do we need to handle two or three things here before we submit this form because we will have this tags in a string format 
now we need to convert it in uh, to array because inside our backend api we are accepting array only okay and then we need to create our slug because if you come to our backend api the slug is a mandatory thing like here you can see the slug is a required path and now we need to create the slug now if you want to you can give user a place where they can edit their slug but here what i will do i will create the slug according to this title so for that what we can do we can create our slug like this and for the slug we will use this title dot split we want to split it with this space but here we will have something let me show you first okay here we will split this and we will join this not like this join it with this dash or this minus symbol also here we can use this title dot to lowercase okay and if we do this let me copy all these things only these things let's copy them and let's come to here now for example if i use this this is my title okay now this will be our title okay now if i use that formula here we will have this kind of slug okay we can use it like this but here what if i use this like this is my title so no like not like this this is not what i wanted to show you guys like this okay here i have this special character now if i press enter then here you can see we have these three dots and we don't want that we only want like this thing okay we'll only accept this kind of slug so let's see how we can create that so for that here what i will do i'll write this little what it's called regular expression not like this like this i guess this is how we can write what a regular expression and we can do it like this and here i'm not going to explain you how all these regular expression works like uh, i mean not i'm not going to explain entire thing here but i will explain what is going on here and after that what i will do i will use this uh, what we will use after this split first let me format this code okay before you guys became confused so here i will also use this filter and inside this filter what we will have we will have let's call it item and here we can use this item dot trim and let's use it like this i know i know i will explain don't worry okay now here if i remove all these things and paste this thing and now you can see we have this undefined and uh, we don't want this undefined where it is come from and this is because here i forgot to use something inside this replace okay like this and now this is the result that we want but let me explain what is going on here okay first let me go here and add that space like this now here first of all we are converting this title to lowercase then we are using this replace method which we can use inside our javascript to strings then here we have this little regular expression where we are doing we are replacing all of the special character if we have this a to j in small character or capital character we are going to accept that otherwise what we are doing we are replacing all of the special characters with this space and we are doing this globally okay then we are splitting them with this space now because here we have this space if there is any special character we will add those with this space and if you split that with this space what it will do it will create separate uh, array and inside array we can use filter method to filter the array and what this filter will do it will create brand new array okay so here what we are doing we have this item so here we are only accepting if there is any value so if there is space then the stream will remove that so that will be gone means the special character will be gone and then we can use this join method inside array which will join this array with this little dash symbol that's it and that will be our slug ladies and gentlemen 
and after this log we need to create our tags so i'll call it a new tags so here we have this tags here again we need to use this split and now we will split it with this comma and now i realize that here inside our handle change we are splitting with this comma and space so let's split it with this comma only and then what we will do this time we will use all of these method here but this time instead of this filter here i will use this map okay because here i want to create a brand new array so this will fil filter out this but here we don't want to do this we just want to map it here but here as we already talked now here we want to select only four items from inside these tags right so for that here we can use i guess this we don't need to use this uh, join and all here we will use this splice so we can splice this starting index will be zero and we want to select four item only okay that's it now here let me again explain what is going on here okay now here we have this split method we are splitting this tax this will be our string we are splitting it uh, with this comma which will give us the array and uh, we are mapping all those array and if there is any space we will remove them and we are splicing them to only select these four items now if i again show you guys this let me remove all this now here if you have one two three four and five this is your for example this tags now if we run this method this validation chain or these chains then it will only give us this array so that's what we are doing it is simple it is like simple as javascript thing which you can do okay now we have this slug and tag so what is the waiting let's submit this form but here also we will have thumbnail which is our file so for that we need to create our form data okay and that will be new form data like this and here as you can notice here we can pass this html element if you want to you can directly pass the form okay like this form uh, or the reference of this form if you are using it inside a normal javascript plain javascript then you can use that document dot get element by the form and then you can directly pass this form here and it will handle all of the other tasks but at that time you need to also handle other thing here let me think what that is and that is this enc type multi-part form data okay this is the encoding type which you need to use if you are handling like files inside your form okay so you can come to this w3school.com or you can simply search for this thing if you want to know more about these things so ladies and gentlemen now we are handling it like this so we don't need to worry about all those things now here what you can do you can simply use this form data dot append and you can append like this thumbnail and you can add that thumbnail here you can do those things but here i don't like to do all these things because here we can use our brain power and javascript and javascript will handle all of the things so for that what i will do i'll create this final post and inside this final post what i will do i'll split or I will what I will do I will spread all of these post info and I'll add this new tags and which will be our tags by the way and we will have a slug as well okay now these things uh, will be inside our final post now this final post uh, will be our object and uh, because this is our object like the for loop for our arrays inside object we have for in loop okay so let's use this for let key in final post okay and here we can use this form data dot append now here as the name we need to pass this string and inside this key we will have these property name or this key as an string format 
so we can simply use this key right here and because this final post is an object and uh, to access the value from inside this we can simply pass the screen screen not a screen string inside this array syntax and that will be key so what it will do it will loop through this form data and add this key as the name of this append okay file name property name whatever this is or this field name then this will add the other thing the data okay now we will have this form data here so what we can do now we need to create a method from where we can upload this post so let's create that so let's see what is the method or what is the endpoint so endpoint is this create now we need to create a method to create this post and send this to create endpoint lots of create create okay i'll copy this paste it below and let's call it uh, create post and uh, form data okay that's fine but we are going to just change this to create that's it right now let's save this come here and now we need to await or ladies and gentlemen we are only handling this form part here right we are not going to submit or not going to create this form right here this is the part of or this is the job of other components like this create post this is the job of this create post component so we are not going to do that so for that what we can do we can accept this method called on submit here as well like the on submit inside our form and here what we will do if everything goes fine if everything is clear because here we are validating all these things we will simply call this on submit method and pass this form data now it doesn't matter if you want to update this post or create this post do whatever you want my name is post form and this is the data that i'm holding right now and these data are completely okay so that's what we are doing from inside this post form okay so now if i save this file now we cannot log and see this what we have inside this form data okay we cannot do that this is the default behavior of javascript but here we can simply pass this on submit and let's call it handle submit and let's create this handle submit here so here we will have our data so for now just to show you guys what i will do i will log this data to the console but here we will not have anything not anything and uh, form is not defined where is this 115 let me see that where is this happening and this is my mistake i add this form just to show you guys and forgot to remove it from here okay that's fine now if i try to submit this okay we need to add something here otherwise it will throw error and uh, let's uh, submit this and uh, on submit is not a function what the heck is this and why is this on, on submit is not a function because here we have this on submit and this is a function and I guess because I'm inside this update post guys sorry for that okay now we need to come to this create post let's add something here and if I post this now we have that form data finally okay now we have this form data so what we can do we can use this method which is the method called create post which we have inside this api slash post now this method is an asynchronous so we need to await it let's use this async let's uh, format this so that it looks nice and here what we will have we will have this error or we will have this post right so what i will do if there is error then we will simply return and we need to use our very favorite method which we made a little bit ago 
called update notification let's use it here so we need to import it like this and now we can use it here and let's pass this error if there is any error okay otherwise here we will have this post right let me see inside our create post method what we are sending from our backend we are sending this post okay now once we create this post we don't want to display this create post anymore we will navigate our user to the update post component okay because once the post is created then we don't want to handle this from inside our create post the next part will be handled by our update post component so let's uh, see how we can do that so for that here we are using this react router dom so we need to import use navigate or use navigate right use navigate okay this is the hook which we can use and this hook will give us this navigate like this and now we can use this navigate here not navigator navigate and we will navigate to our update post update post not like this but for this update post we also need to pass our post slug so I'll use this template string here and here we can use this dollar curly brace and post dot not ID slug okay let's see if this works or not let me save this and now what I will do I'll go and create a beautiful post here okay okay now as you can see this is my post and uh, I did a little bit of cheating because I copy and paste all of these things from here okay because I don't want to type out all this markdown so now if we click on this post and here we also need to render that little icon or that animation but nothing is happening right and um, why is nothing is happening is the is the let's see fail to load resources uh, the server response with a status 500 okay what is the problem inside our backend and uh, I know what is the problem okay let me show you what the problem is because here inside the submit post or submit handle submit method where we have we are sending this tags right but if you notice inside our backend we cannot send this array like this we need to convert it to a string and then inside our backend we need to parse the data okay so we are already parsing this data inside uh, let me show you where we are using this uh, parse data method and we are parsing this uh, featured and this tags right so now we need to do that same exact thing here so what I will do here I will use this JSON dot stringify method here and will stringify these tags let's save this and let's see if this works or not and let's post this data and now we are inside this new route but it says not found and that is because I again messed up with this thing inside our create post here I need to add the slash as well forward slash but here now we have new post and uh, you can see this if I can show you that do we have that post or not yes this is the post okay but we don't have that uh, what it's called we don't have that thumbnail and we'll handle that later just let's just handle these little little things okay I'm also I I also don't know what I'm doing right now okay everything is fine now now from inside this create post I will handle now the loading part from inside this local storage because inside this local storage now we need to have something now if I go to this local storage where we have this applications and now this is the blog post okay 
now let's uh, render this blog post inside our create post form right here so for that what we can do we can create uh, this uh, use effect hook use effect hook and here what uh, we will do we will search for this local stories dot get item and we'll search for this uh, what is the name of this thing and it's a thing called blog post blog post and uh, if this result if this result you can do it like this if this result uh, e -S -U result is not equal to null or if there is no result we will simply return we don't want to do anything else okay otherwise what we will do we will use this json dot parse method because this will be in string format now we need to parse it to our object okay this result not return result and now we will call it post or let's call it uh, old post old post and now we will create this brand new state here not here here we need to create this state here and I'll call it post info set post info use state okay and this will be null for now okay and uh, there is a reason to set it to null okay and I will show you why we are setting it to null okay and uh, let's use the set post info and i'll spread all of this old post like this now why i'm setting this post info null let me show you that first of all inside this post form i'll pass this initial post info or we can call it initial post and uh, we will pass this post info okay now let's save this file and I'll go to this post form and here we will accept that initial post like this and we will use this initial post where inside the use effect hook let's create a use effect hook here okay here I'll pass this initial post as the dependency here and if this is changed then we will change the set post info to this initial post so that is why I'm using that null okay null here where we have this null right here and if this changes like here we are changing it and what it will do it will fire this use effect hook and it will set this post with this brand new or this initial post or what we can do we can simply spread it like this let's see the magic and now ladies and gentlemen we have all those posts here now if I go to this create post you will see this error and I don't know why this error is here let me see that first okay we have very long error cannot read uh, property up and that is because again let me show you this is because here inside this old post what we have no this is not because this I guess now it took me a little bit to find out the solution but I don't know if this is the exact solution or not but we will handle it if this is not then the error is coming because of we are trying to accept this meta dot length the one thing that you can do you can add this optional parameter here but uh, let's see what else we can do I think this will be the permanent fix so here we can let's export this default post okay let's export this default post we'll come to this one create post and now from inside this post form we can import this default post and now here what I will do if we have everything inside this old post that's fine otherwise uh, we will destructure this default post here so let's save this and now if I go to our 
home page and let's go to this create post okay we don't fix this I guess so we have this error again and uh, let's go and add this optional thing to our meta where we have this one so let's add this let's save this and then now if I go to this one now we have this okay let's refresh it and we have another warning component changing uncontrolled components so where we are doing this uncontrolled thing let's see and that warning is coming from inside this input where we have this image URL to copy okay and that's fine I guess because here we don't want to handle any input event from inside this input field so that's fine now let's see everything is fine or not now if I refresh this again now I'll go to this create post if we have these post we will have them here and that's fine that's completely fine okay now the one thing that I want to do inside this form is whenever we post this form uh, I want to render that little animation thing so for that we can go to this one and where we have this post form or this button here we have this so here we will use this BZ and it will be the state okay so if this is BZ then we will render different icons so we have this icon where we have this icon we have this inside this input field and this is the speeder which uh, we will render okay so where is that okay now here we need to render this and this time here I'm giving it this padding X so I'll remove it because here we already have this width and height and if we use that padding X thing then whenever we submit and uh, change in between this text and this spinner what it will do that button will look like chunky okay it will jump from here and there and I don't want that so now we need to create this BG state so I'll go all the way up let's create this BG and set BG okay this will be false now we need to change its update or we need to update its value whenever we do this handle submit thing or we cannot do it from here because we are not handling these things here right we need to accept this busy as the prop of this component now if I save this file we don't need to see any error okay we don't have any error and I'll go to this create post and here I'll create that state called BG okay now we will pass this BG as the BG prop of this one and now we need to go to this handle submit and here we have this async of it so let's use the state bg and this will be true let's copy and paste it below and we'll make it false now let's save this and what i will do i will change this title because otherwise it will throw error and the error will be slug duplicate slug okay and let's use this slug now if i post this and we had that little transition but that's not what we want right and we have this new post here but we don't want this little animation we want our big animation so for that what I will do I will go to this one and for now just to see I'll change it to true and let's see where we are rendering it so we have this here and uh, let's uh, fix this so we can go to our post form let's uh, come to this uh, button again we have this here and I will use this margin X auto can we make it in the center with this technique okay now we have this in the center that's fine now let's use this text actual XL as well to make it a little bit larger and this looks perfectly fine ladies and gentlemen now also what I will do I will render here what we'll call it post btn title also we will accept it as the prop of this component so let's come all the way up 
and why I'm accepting it as the prop and that is because if you come to this one create post we'll use the same exact form for two things like create and and update right so we don't want to use this post only we want to use update as well so let's uh, save this but before saving this thing i will change it to false again now what i will do i will change the slug to new slug again and let's select this image also we'll use this image let's post this one and it is submitting very quickly and we are not submitting that uh, thumbnail and that is i guess so we don't have the thumbnail let me see first now i finally found out the problem why we cannot upload these images okay and it's a very silly mistake that i did but yeah it's a thing it's a part of life and that is why i'm learning this type script right now because if you go this is very silly mistake here you can see we are destructuring this file and validating all these files and at the end what is this now we need to attach this file instead of this value and you guys are watching me doing this silly mistake and can't you tell me that hmm? but now i found out let me select uh, this uh, what uh, this image and now i will again change the slug and now i'll open the terminal because i don't want to see that red red error so let me send this and now it is doing something and now finally we have that image right here and we fixed that error and when we made this post like uh, we made this post right this is the final post we don't want to add this inside our create post or we don't want to store it inside our local storage if we finally made this post so for that we can reset our form but again to reset this form i will again pass this as the prop reset after submit and now this will be our boolean value so we don't need to provide its value if you pass this then it will consider it as the true so where we need to go we need to go here and we'll accept it like this and if this is the case then we can come all the way down here where we have this on submit and if this is the case then reset form and uh, we can create this reset form right here and to reset this form you just need to provide the set post info like uh, this default post info and then we will go to this local storage dot remove item and we'll remove that blog post let's save this file okay and here i'll add something just to make the slug new let's select this image and i'll open this uh, local storage as well now here we have this post let's submit this and now as soon as i submit this we don't have this here we don't have this inside our create post as well and but we have this new post and that's what we want okay if the post is successfully created then we don't want to do all those things right that's it or what you can do you can add it inside the state because if something bad happened for example let's assume something bad happened and you got an error in that case you will lose your data and if you don't want that you can provide this say reset after submit so let's create this here okay like this 
and uh, we can pass this as the prop here and uh, if everything goes fine then we will do it right where we will do this thing after submitting this form if we didn't get any error okay right here let's change it to true but the default value will be false okay let's save this file and if you come to this one again and let's try to create this with something something like this now if i submit this can't you submit this now we have this post here but we can't reset it and that is why let me go to this post form again and inside here we are using this clear reset form right here but what we can do now what we need to do we need to go here inside this use effect if this reset after submit is changed then we will simply return or okay we need to return here and we will return this method if reset after submit is true then what we need to do we need to call this reset form okay that's it now it will reset our form i know that now inside this update post let's handle quickly things okay so first of all we need to let me go to this if i go to this update thing then here we have the slug now we need to find out this post with the slug and then we'll render all of those data here so let's quickly do that so for that we need to again go inside this post and let's create one method or we already have this method to get single post and we have no we need to create this so i'll create this new method called get post and to get this post we don't need these things here we will only go to this single slash the slug okay so we need to accept the slug right here and that's it this is how we will get our post i guess let me go to our backend and see if we have these things inside this routes we have the single and slug okay with this we will get our post and for that again let's go to this update post and here we will have this use params this is the hook coming from this react router now with this we will have this params or what we can do from here we can directly destructure the slug we will have this slug inside our params okay and that is because if you remember inside our app.js we are using the slug this is the name and that is why we will get that as a slug inside this use params okay now here we will use this use effect hook and inside this hook what i will do i will create this method called fetch post and now let's create this method quickly like this async not like this okay now here we need to await get post and uh, let's pass this slug here you will get this error or you will get this post if there is error you know that what you need to do let's come to this create post and i'll copy these things okay now we will paste them here let's import it and now we can use this update notification error will be the type and we will pass this error if there is any otherwise now we need to create our post info like this which we are doing right here to save this post info so what i will do i will copy this post info paste it here and now we need to import this use state hook now here also what i want to do if there is any error then it means we cannot found a post okay so 
I will create this not a found set and not found and let's use this use state hook false and here we will use this if condition if not found then we'll simply return and render that not found component which we made for that 404 not found okay now we can go to this one if there is any error first of all we will set this not found and we'll do bo both of these things update this error and we'll set this not found to true which will render this not found component that's it okay now we will have this set post info now we can use it like this and we will spread all of this post like this and from our backend api what we will send we will send tags and those tags will be in array form in array form right so if we come down here we have this get post method and here we have these tags and these will be in array form now we need to convert it to a string so what we can do let's use this tags and this will be post dot tags dot join and we can join it with this comma and space okay and also if you want to you can use this method here to make it optional now we can set this post info as the initial post okay also here we need to pass if you come to this thing we don't have this text inside our button and that is because here we need to pass this button title post button title post button title and this will be update post or we can simply call it update like this let's save this file and that's how it looks right now if I go to this one and if I go to this one we don't have anything and that is because let's come to this and here first of all what I will do I log this post let's see if we have this post or not let's save this and if I go to this one let's go to the console where we have console we have bunch of errors can it read property reading undefined tags okay and uh, I told you that I'm doing too much of silly mistake and that is because here I'm using this post this is gate man what I'm doing let's see if this I'll remove this one and this one and this one and this one and let's see what else we have here let's go to this home refresh this and if I go to this one now we have this exact post here as well but now here we don't have this thumbnail and to display this thumbnail what we need to do we need to go inside this post form and previously inside that uh, thumbnail we were rendering what we were rendering our local thumbnail like uh, this one right create url object but this time what we need to do we need to render the actual url so for that here we can go and if there is this initial post or thumbnail if there is this thing then we can use this use selected thumbnail url and initial post dot thumbnail let's save this file and let's see if we have something yes ladies and gentlemen now if i edit this one we will have this error and that is because of this initial post thing now i need to go and now I need to go and add this optional thing here like this we don't need to add it here let's save this file and now if I go to this one now we will not have that error also we have that thumbnail but if we don't have this thumbnail because these thumbnails are here because we don't have thumbnail these are the default thumbnail right but if I edit this one we will have this thumbnail that's nice and now you can see all of the data are coming from our backend if you want to you can edit them as well but we don't have the method to submit this so let's quickly create that on submit method as well 
on submit handle submit and I'll go to this create post and copy handle submit from here let's uh, copy this and I'll paste it after this use effect now here we will have this data we need to see this BG and also we need to create this okay and I will come up like this now we need to pass this BG as well BG and that will be BG like this let's format this and here to handle this one first of all we need to create another method called update post and let's see we have this update post or not we don't have that so we need to create it like this one I will copy and paste it below this time method type will be post I know that okay and update we don't need to say this update right to update we need to send our ID post ID let me go to our back end and to update we need to just send this post ID this is the delete one this one okay and method type will be put so not post again this will be put okay and here now we need to accept two things first thing will be post ID and second thing will be form data so we need to pass this post ID like this and I think everything needs to be the same but here we have this update so let's save this file and now we can update this post with this method and we have these two okay this is the component one okay and uh, where is the method this one and at this time we need to also pass this post info dot id okay and rest of the things will be the same this time i don't need to use this one but uh, what i will do i'll use this set post info and i will spread all of these posts coming from our back end api to inside this post info like this okay that's it and let's see okay here we have everything but again we need to send set up these things as well because if we didn't do this it will throw an error we need to join this tags like this and now if I save this file let's uh, come to this one and now here what I will do I will go and let's change it to heading 2 this is how we can change it to heading and let's upload this image and now we can copy it here paste them here okay now if I update this and let's say go to this post this was the post and we have those things okay thank god but now what we need we need to create this uh, view as well so let's quickly create how we can view this post and so for that I will create a model and I render that model at the end of this post form so here we will render that but uh, let's come to all the way up to this form let's fold this one because here I don't want to go all the way down all the time so let's uh, cut this one I'll paste it here and here I will render this I'll call it device view or you can call it uh, post view or anything that you like you know I'll create this component and here let's see how we can create this component first of all we need to have let's uh, see the feature that we want only then we can understand how we are going to achieve this okay now the first thing that you want is we need to view this post if we have something here like okay we'll view that here and if we click on this backdrop we want to close this as well and it has this fixed size if you can see right so let's uh, go to this view and add some class names the first thing that I will add this background gray 500 and we can use this BG opacity of 50 now it will 
make its uh, background it will set its background opacity and then we want to use the entire width so for that we can use this fixed okay and then if you use this insect zero and what it will do this is like object fill inside our react native okay what it will do it will fill all the screen if we go to our app first of all we need to import this inside our form to see the progress so let's import it let's save this file and let's see if we can see anything here and that's what it looks right now also here i want to add this background blur to this one so let's add that background blur i will use this bag backdrop blur small so let's okay that's how it looks and i like this one let's make it flex and justify center item center so that we can render our actual div inside here and here also i'll use some class names so first of all i'll use this bg white and here i want to give it this fixed width and height like the device the actual device now if we open this console now if we inspect this and here you can see we have a bunch of devices right so let's uh, go to this pixel 5 and this is the device size okay if you like you can use this one let's uh, close this and the device size that i want to use is let me go to this uh, tailwind config because here we need to add this inside this extend so I want to extend this width and this height. So these are the device width and the device height that I want to use. So now we can use it directly as a class name. So width will be the device width. So device width. I didn't save this. Save this one. Okay. Okay. Device width and height will be device height like this now if i save this can we see something okay ladies and gentlemen now also i will make it rounded rounded not full rounded and we will make its overflow auto to show that scroll bar okay now here first of all at the top i will render this image and you guys know that i like this class name very much aspect video and here we will render the thumbnail itself okay we'll accept this thumbnail as the prop of this component and uh, we will accept this title and all inside our post info okay or the thing that we are going to render inside this device view is this thumbnail title and the content so let's accept them like this title and content okay so below this image i will render this h1 and uh, let's call it title and let's add some class names to this h1 like the font semi bold font semi bold and then uh, let's make it text gray 700 this time we'll use the 700 and then we will make it's uh, padding y of 2 and text xl let's make its text bigger but here what i want to do i want to give this uh, content and this h1 some padding as well so let's use this uh, div with the padding 2 or padding x2 now i'll wrap them like this now we have this content in the form of markdown right we cannot render it like this so the markdown to render markdown we need to install this thing called uh, let me go to this markdown to markdown to jsx this is the package that we need to install now you can see it's a pretty popular package so let's copy it's a command now we need to close the server and let's install this now we can simply import this as the markdown okay now also we need to import this markdown from here import markdown like this so 
Now inside this markdown, we can render our actual content. Okay, let's format this code and this is the formatted code what we need to format now. Okay, this is uh, the thing. Let's see what it looks or if we have any error. We don't have any error and because that is because we we are not running our server. So let's run this with this npm start. And now when I restart this, we get this error and let's fix why we are getting this error. Cannot read a property, undefined, replace or things like that. Why we have all these things and that is because obviously we are sending this data inside our update post. So for that, uh, what I will do, I'll simply go here and uh, import that default post or default post info let's save this file and let's see if we have this error again or not again we have this error why is this and it is not saying us where we are getting this error this is not fair okay i found out that that error is not because of this post thing so i'll make it to null again let's save this file and that error was coming because of this markdown so let's uncomment this one and you will get that error again so that is the problem ladies and gentlemen now we will fix it but before that we need to pass this like visible okay so we don't want to visible this all the time if this is not the visible thing then we will return this null and it will solve the problem okay let me refresh this let's see if we have this error okay we have this error again and that is because now we need to go to this uh, create post or this post form and here what i will do i will pass this visible and let's uh, set this so device view and i will create an state with this one so let's come up let's see if it will fix our error or not Now what I will do, I will use this one and uh, whenever we press that view button, we have this view inside this form, we have this view like here or on click and uh, we will use the set view and make it to true and also here we have this reset so let's quickly set this on click to it and uh, we will call it a reset to form okay we have this reset form so we just need to attach it here let's save this file and let's refresh this again if we have this error or not and again we don't have the fix so let's go to this pause to form again let's try to fix this i want to fix this right now let's set this title here okay this title will be the title of our post we will have this content and this will be the content and we will have a thumbnail and this will be the selected thumbnail url let's save this file and let's see one more time and again we have this error what the heck is this and that is because I guess I don't need to use this visible here what I'm doing right now I don't know this is not visible if this is not visible then we don't want to return return null okay that's it now if I press this view then we have this and that's what we want now if I refresh this everything is fine okay now what I will do I'll go to this one now if I press this view then this is the view this is the markdown okay but here if you can notice this looks like plain text and to fix this inside tailwind css we have this very beautiful another thing and that is obviously a class name and this class name is this pos p r o s e okay and uh, let's uh, move it up let's save this file and let's see if we have something changed or not and uh, nothing is changed and that is because to use this ports class here we need to install something called a tailwind typography 
so let's search for this tailwind typography and this is especially made to work with uh, this kind of thing like the markdown what it will do it will fix all the error or all the style on its own but first we need to install this tailwind typography so let's copy this now we can go to this one and let's uh, again i will what i will do i'll simply install this and i'll come back now if you come to this typography documentation again then first of all we need to require this okay because this is the plugin so now we need to go inside our tailwind config file where we have let's search for this tailwind config.js here we have this plugins we need to import it like this let's save this file and now come to this one and here now we can use this cross and i will use this sm because we are using it inside a small device so let's use this one now if we do it like this it will fix all of the styling which we need and it is again updating it let's refresh this again you know if i view this then this is how it looks right now and this looks beautiful and everything is handled by that post class this typography plugin okay now if we click on this backdrop we want to close this as well so for that here what we can do we can simply go to this one and let's accept this on close this will be the method we can go to this post form and inside this on close what we will do we will simply set this uh, visible so device okay so device not like this set so device and we will make it to false let's save this file come to this one again and here if we click on this backdrop then what we need to do we need to close this form so for that we need to add this on click here and uh, what uh, will be the on click handle on click let's uh, create this method like this and here we can simply use this on close like this but if you close anywhere around this form it will close this right whenever if you try to select this text it will close this and we don't want that so to fix this what you can do you can simply come here and here you can pass this reference and this will be container so let's call it container and uh, we can not ref by the way here we can add this id and let's call it container and here we can check event if the e dot target dot id is equal to container like this only then we want to close this okay let's save this and if i go to this one if i click here nothing will be change but if i click here it will close this device view like this and if i click on this reset it will reset the form okay so we have everything right now and uh, if i click here we can delete this as well if i click here we can edit this as well and also we can make it featured now this is our backend api guys but the one thing that i don't like is here we are rendering this react app let's change it to blog admin so now for that we need to go inside this index html which you will find inside this public folder inside this index html if you come down here where we have this title we have this title here let's change it to blog admin let's save this and now this is our blog admin also we can search but when we try to search this this is not what we want and we cannot type this word here and that is because i found it here inside this handle key down what we are doing we are using this handle key down here and we are resetting this query and we are doing these kind of things 
So first of all, what I will do, I'll remove this handle key down. Okay, now I was editing the video, what you just saw, and I found out that here we have something mistake. And that mistake is here inside the search form, the first thing that uh, you don't need to do anything like the changing and all. Here, I'm using this single equal to, here we need to have triple or double. Now it will solve that uh, search problem, okay? So now if I try to search this, now our search result is here. If you go to this home, our search result is here, but uh, from inside this create post, we cannot search this, but we want to search it from inside here as well. And to fix this, so, so we need to go inside the search provider. And here, whenever we search this, after that, we need to change our route. And we know that we have this use navigator, use navigate. And here we will have our navigate, okay? So after this, you can simply use this navigate and navigate to the home page. Now let's save this file and let's uh, refresh everything and let's test this app. Okay, now here if I try to search this, now we are in the home page and here we have our search result. And here we need to also solve one more problem and that is, let me show you what, okay. Now currently I'm inside this create post, let me reset everything, okay. Now I'll go to this home page and if I try to edit this and let's edit something, and I don't want to do anything else. So now let's go to the home and create post. Now I have that same post which we were updating and we don't want that. We want to reset this form. So for that, also here we can do lots of things. Let's go to this update post and we can pass this reset after submit and it will consider it as true. So let's save this file, come here. Now one thing that we need to remove is from here so come down from inside this handle submit method i will remove this logic okay we are currently inside this handle submit and now here we have this uh, reset form method so let's come all the way up now we are doing this resetting part already here okay this return means this is the cleanup function okay so whenever this component is unmounting if this reset form or reset after submit is true then it will reset this form we don't need to do anything else also here what i need to solve is here i'll simply check for this if there is initial post only then we will set this like this okay and now here we can add this question mark now it needs to solve our problem let's save this and now if i go to this home now I'm inside this edit page. Now I'll try to edit it. And if I now go to this create post, the post form is now reset. And that is because of that cleanup function, this one. Okay, so far, so good. That's it. So these are the things that uh, which I wanted to fix. So I jump right into it because it's a final thing. Okay, now our project is final, but here you can do lots of other things that you want. And if you find any difficulty, you can ask me in the comment section, you can DM me, you can do whatever you want and I am ready to help you guys, okay. Now we have our app ready, but uh, what I will do, I will do nothing right now. That's it. This is our everything that we need. Okay. Thanks for watching. Okay guys, sorry for the interruption, but here I came back again without my face and that is because now I'm doing this final editing thing or final inspection and I found out something that we can fix inside this app or inside this admin panel and let me fix those. And the first thing that we want to do is we need to go inside this notification provider and here you can see I'm using this wrong spelling to this bg green 400 so let me fix this so this was the very first one and the next thing is let's go to the search provider and here if you search for this console then we are using this console.log here and because we have this update notification method inside this notification provider so we can use this so let's copy this name and i'll come to this one and here we can destructure this update notification 
from inside the use notification and it is not giving me this suggestion and let me see okay we have this use notification here now let me go and import this manually okay now we can use this update notification instead of this console log here we need to display this error and that will be error and the error itself okay now let's save this file and the next thing is let's go to this home.gsx and let's find out this console log here and uh, here we have three console logs so the first thing is here whenever we are deleting this post and we are updating this error here so here we can use this update notification and we need to import this so let's come up and here we will import this update notification from inside this use notification like this and let's come down and here this will be error and we'll pass this error itself then here we are using this console log to display this message so here again we can use this update notification and this will be our success message so here the type will be success and the another console log is here inside this fetch post and we are displaying this if anything goes wrong so let's use this update notification and this will be error and error message itself now let's save this file and let's come to this post form and here we are using this console.log for one time and that is inside this handle image upload so here we already have this update notification i guess we already imported it so we can use this inside our handle image upload so let's change this so with this update notification and this will be error and we'll pass this error itself and let's save this file and that's it these are the things that we need to update and let's move to the another thing and that is this not found and here you can see we are only using this not found text so i want to style this a little bit so let's see if we go to this any gibberish route we'll have this not found so let's style it a bit now instead of this div what we can do we can use this h1 and let's add some class names font uh, bold and uh, text 4xl let's save this that's how it looks also we can change it to 6xl text center and text gray 500 okay also we can decrease it to 300 and let's give it this margin top of 10 and that's how our component looks like guys and the last thing that i want to fix inside this application is the warning that you will get inside your terminal you can see that the ref value notification that current will likely to have and blah 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 and this error is because if you come to this notification provider and that warning is because of this return function so let's uh, comment out this and let's save this file and now you can see the warning is now gone and let's teach this warning if we are getting this warning or not now if i try to submit this form then you can see this little warning here with this animation okay that works completely fine and we have another warning use effect has a missing dependency fetch post and this is coming from inside this home.gsx now according to the warning inside this terminal what is it saying is inside this use effect hook we are using this fetch post method and here we are missing out this dependencies either use this fetch post as a dependency inside this array or remove this dependency and if you use this as a dependency the warning will not go away and if you remove this you will be in a trouble let me show you that now if i remove this array from here and if i save this file and the warning is go away but if you come to your backend server and now if i come to this admin panel and go to this home page 
and now if I come to this backend server then you can see the fetch request right and uh, this is the infinite loop so if you remove that dependency array that will happen now because we are using this fetch post here as well whenever we want to fetch more posts so we cannot add entire this logic or the logic from inside this fetch post method inside our use effect hook if you want to fix this you can add this function inside here and you can call this fetch post from inside this use effect and that will be fine but uh, here we are using it here as well so the simple fix that you need to use is you can add this comment before the line where you are getting that es lint warning okay if you use this comment here the warning will go away now if i save this file then you can see all of the warning is now gone so that's it guys these are the fix that i wanted to do quickly because i found it when i did that final inspection now after this if you found any things that we can fix inside this app you can ask me in the comment section and i will assist you guys there so that's it this is now our final admin panel and also if you notice here inside this admin panel we are not handling those responsiveness and that is because i don't want to make this admin panel responsive because at the end we are going to use this admin panel inside our desktop app right so that's it